<laughs> What's going on, guys? I'm the Beastly Gamer. Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past, the future belongs to the nerds. I'm joined by the Revolver Live crew. Today we got the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Wilson. What's going on, my friend? Not much, man. How you doing? I'm doing real good. I, I like to go through and, and do these little introductions, even though everybody knows who the hell we are. I just want to catch up and, and see how you're feeling, man. Have you had a good week? Yeah, I had a great week, man. Awesome games done quick. Just got done, and I had a great week of watching all the... Um... All the cool speed runs and stuff like that. There's some really cool stuff like uh, Super Dram World and Super Mario World and a um, Link to the Past like randomizer run. I don't know if you've heard of a randomizer before. No, no. what's that? No, I haven't. So like, you know, in uh, Zelda, you start off and like you go into the cave. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. All the items are randomized, but it has logic. So it won't lock you like lock you out of somewhere. So you could open up a chest, your very first chest in like a link to the past and get like the master sword or um, a cape or the mirror or the moon pearl or the titan glove. So it just completely rearranges all the rewards you get. Anything that's a drop or that you pick up from a chest is completely randomized. So I'm playing my favorite game in a completely completely different light and I have nowhere to go. I, I, I don't know where to go. I'm stuck. So it, the it's randomizer, awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's it's obviously a mod. How are you playing these games? So I mean, you emulate. You know what I mean? Um, don't hate go, emulate. Don't hate emulate. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, you get the ROM. And it has to be the original, like 1.0 ROM from Japan. It's like Zelda No Densu or whatever. And um, you go to a website and choose the variations that you want. So you can do like swordless or um, what was it? Like one where all the like the dungeon keys are like spread out in all tons of different places. And um, so you put in your parameters that you want it to randomize. And then it spits out a ROM that you then <laughs> put that you then put into your SNES and it completely just randomizes the game. And it's so cool and it has logic to it. So it won't like lock you out. Like there's it won't break always the a way to go. So for instance, I got like the Titan glove. So like right away, I was able to go to the dark world like instantly. So I had to go to the dark world and go to like random caves and open chests to get like the flippers and the moon pearl and like all this stuff. Like it's so wild, dude. Have you, you uh, this sounds incredible. I've never tried it before, but God, it's like, it is making some of your favorite games brand new again. Yeah. You know, you know what the the end game is, you know what the end result is, but it's a different way of getting it. So it makes it all new. It's awesome. But on the other side of this conversation, you were talking about speed runs. Have you ever? Have you, I know you watch them. I've watched quite a few myself. Have you ever tried that? No. Um, it's just, dude. They're so technical, man. Like, there's people <sighs> that have been running these games for thousands of hours, man. And I don't know. Like, I can't help it. Like, I'm a competitive person, so if I start doing it, I'm like, I want to compete. I want to do this. So, I actually saw the the randomizer run was a race. So the guys had both had the same file, and were had two TVs back to back, and were racing each other, and they both so finished. Their randomizer was the same. <laughs> Yeah, so all their stuff was in the same spot, um, but it, but it was totally random to their knowledge, and they had to get. I mean, they had to get all the the pendants and the crystals, and then beat Ganon, and they did it all in like an hour and a half, and they finished like two <laughs> minutes apart. What? And it was it was so hype. They'd open up a chest and get a cool <laughs> like a cool item, and the crowd would just go, "Whoa, shit!" You know, like, and it is. It was amazing to watch. I suggest go back um, to Games Done Quick and watch the VOD. It was like the third to last run right before Super Dram World and Breath of the Wild. And pfft, man, it was awesome. It was I cool. once saw I saw a guy do a speed run of Mario 64, and I'm still out forever be in awe of what that guy was doing. Yeah. Because I spent I spent probably close to a thousand to three thousand hours playing that game years ago. Uh, all 120 stars just just maxed out. And, and seeing the way that they were controlling Mario and just the, the little devils in the details that they were doing to get certain things, like to do it v- really, really fast, blew my mm-hmm. mind. I, I could never do it. I think I'd, I'd die of stress. It seemed like the stress of getting halfway through it and then fucking up would just, oh, it would drain you. Yeah, I watched this guy's name as uh, Cheese <clears throat> on uh, on Twitch, and he did the 120-star run in like two hours. So it's like a star. Yeah, that's, that's that right there. Oh, my God. A star oh. minute. Oh, that's my God. insane. Well, Gary and Briar, I'm sure you guys' conversation is going to pale in comparison to the awesome shit Wilson just talked about. But hey, let's give it a try. Briar, I, know, man, I watched awesome well, things done quick myself. Oh. oh yeah, go to Gary first. Yeah, no, I'm saying I, I watched a bit of it. To be honest, I'm I, 
I respect what speedrunners do. <laughs> it's not something that interests me. Um, I tuned in and I think a guy was speedrunning Mario World 3 with his dick. I'm not sure, though. I didn't really stay for long. Well, it was like a dickless if you run, thought that, actually. then I, if he was doing that, Gary, don't pretend you would have stayed and watched the entire thing. Don't fucking front. Well, they, were, they weren't cutting down to the the action i couldn't see that he was you know how he was slapping the x button and whatever but <laughs> hey ho you know different strokes for different folks i mean if he can if he can save peach with his schlong then more power to him well anyway so. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only way he'll ever get to use it with peach how's your week been Gary? what have you been up to man oh you're going straight into me um i have been i've been pretty good gotta say i've been playing a bit of variety this week um still clinging to that crippled carcass of a game destiny 2 been enjoying it it's been fun Purple loving it face. it is it's trash but i like trash so you know can't complain can't complain and, um, and you you uh you recently bought some new hardware uh, for your streaming kit and we had a little issues this morning because i guess it was kind of uh it threw you for a loop as far as your audio and then it came back what did you buy yeah, well, it was. Um, it's kind of like a a way of accessing the PC, like a password biometrics, and it's in the form of a flashlight. So now I don't have a password anymore. I just stick my dick straight into the USB, <laughs> um, and it unlocks my PC. But you know why it didn't work? Because you have to be erect every time, Gary. Penal recognition. Yeah. I mean, I was. But it's it's a still, lot to ask for. It still didn't fit. It was sad. Fuck. Um, <laughs> I know. I know. I've, I've I've sent it back and asked for a, a extra small. Okay. Um, I was gonna say, is there a length uh, like requirement for that? Yeah, I, I I didn't quite meet the height to get on the ride, but I still tried. I did my best. Beastly's Be- too big best. to ride that ride. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's like trying to stick a, a stick a fifty cent piece in a dime slot. It doesn't work, man. Exactly. So aside from that, no, I've um, I bought some some bits and pieces. What I have been doing, and something that I wanted to hype up a little bit and drum some interest for, is um, a game that's been out on PS4. Um, Xbox and PC for a while, but has only just dropped on Switch, and I've been playing it on Switch. Uh, that's Fury. Have you seen Fury? Oh, F-U-R. Yeah, I've yes, that. yes, I, I have it. Freaking awesome game, so good. It's like it's like a game built for streaming, in my opinion, because it's a, a boss rush game. One versus so, one, yeah. It's yeah, there's like no insane. trash, just straight in, almost like Dark Souls, like all the you know the um, the money shots of Dark Souls, but then just level after level after level. And I'm like garbage at games. I'm like the worst player. I have stupid thumbs. Um, so I was like stuck on the second level for like two hours, but fucking loved it. Really good game. I think I got past the second boss and then went on to something else, but you are right. That is definitely a keeper. And now it's on the switch. The switch is going to end up beating. They're going to end up destroying PlayStation and Xbox pretty soon. 60 frames per second, 1080p. It looks comparable to the PS4 standard version. They've done a side by side on it. You know, the fact you can take that on handheld, play 720p, 60 frames, laying in bed, like. Dark Souls S one v one battles. It's really, really good. Like, that's, that, that's, I mean, I played a whole bunch of shit, but that was one that I just wanted to rep out and shout out a little bit for people that like Dark Souls but want something that's maybe um, a little bit uh, easier to, to easier just get immediate it's, it's, gratification. Yeah, it's easier it's accessibility. Game. It's Dark Souls without finding the bosses. Yeah. That so yeah. yeah and that, you start that, with all your gear. Like you don't have to level up and raise your sword. Like every move that you're going to have throughout the whole game, you start the game with. So it's just a case of becoming more, uh, like get, gaining mastery over those moves. But it's fucking great, really. And it's like twenty dollars. You're making me want to go back and play. It, it looks really it, cool too. It like is. It's got a cool look. The thing that drove me crazy about that was that there's these long sequences of like. There, I guess you would call them story exposition. Yeah, yeah where. You're like forced into this like slow walk mode. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, fuck <laughs> this game. Like I, I could get down with like the super hard difficulty and like trying to beat the boss and you know, repeating over and over, dying over and over again. That didn't bother me at all. I was having fun. And then I had to walk from point A to point B, which was about fifteen meters. <laughs> and it took me about twenty minutes. I was like, fuck this game. I remember that, bro. <laughs> wow, I do remember that now. Jeez. It didn't slow feel walk. as bad. I, I put it into Japanese language, which I do for most of my games, and it flew by. <laughs> Well, that's another. That's a, yeah, it, it was actually it's built by a French team, but in Japanese for some reason it fits. It looks like um, Hyperlight Drifter. I don't know if you ever played or seen yeah. Hyperlight Drifter. Mm-hmm. If you put that into 3D Wind Waker like cell shaded style, rather than the 8 bit or 16 bit whatever it's in uh, pixel art style, it, it kind of looks like what I would imagine Hyperlight Drifter to look like. It's a fucking great game though. I mean, like you say, brother, there's, there's, there is exposition in there, but I guess if you 
if you want a bit of story, there is story and reason why you're in this multi-layered prison um, as yeah. you progress. But. I, I, I 100% agree. And since Briar chimed in with the slowness, how's your week been, Briar? Welcome, man. How you doing? Uh, very well, very well. Uh, it's been a good week. Uh, kind of reignited my passion for Destiny 2 this week. I, I'm not going to lie to you. Ooh. Uh, we got a lot of news to talk about later. Uh, Wilson was kind of enough to write, basically uh, rewrite the TWAB for us, so we're going to go over that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I've been playing, I have been playing Destiny PvP and enjoying it and having a good time. And my passion for raiding kind of got reignited by the chase for the Midnight Coup, uh, which is a hand cannon. That's it's a really good hand cannon. Tefty's been kind of you know on our case about not having it, so uh, Wilson kind of ignited my passion to go get it. So we went and got it, and I did two two raids, uh, and it was just fun. It was fun to do raids. It's fun to like get loot. That loot drops like in the raid, so you, like you get all excited about it. Um, I don't know, man. Like, it just feels like a good news week for Destiny. Like a good, a feel good week for Destiny this week. Okay. Well, um, me today, I had to do a photo shoot though for fourteen hours. <laughs> <laughs> I had to wake how, up at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Are you Some late watching Overwatch League is what it was. Right. <laughs> <Yeah. What>? Right. <laughs> What what kind of photo shoot would that be? I, I uh, mean, it started off as a hockey shoot in one town and ended up being a basketball shoot in another town. Uh, so I was just shooting pictures all <gasps> day. Was it the oh same players? God. No, no. Um, <laughs> hockey players. Just, oddly enough, you cannot mix hockey players and basketball players. It's like uh, oil say, and like, water. They, they will immediately combust. They will. <laughs> fights will break out. Um, of course, the basketball players will get their asses kicked. Um, <laughs> you need it's like you need about a a three to one ratio of basketball players to hockey players <laughs> to have a fair fight. Um, and unfortunately, uh, fortunately for the basketball players, there's not many hockey players left because nobody really knows what that sport is anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's a it's a pretty fun fight. You know, you got to be there to see it. <laughs> well, I'm happy you guys had a good week. Uh, I'm going to go into something I've done, and I showed you guys pictures. I went on and bought the the game that no one should buy. At least that's what you hear in the media. Oh. I, I went and You're talking and about Mario Odyssey. Briar? <laughs> Damn. Shit. Uh, I went on and, and, and bought an Xbox One game, I, I, and you know everything inside You're of You're talking me, about Halo Master Chief Collection. No, I have that already. And- Halo That's dope. I bought that the other day. Don't, <laughs> yeah, don't it is, isn't it? Master Chief. <laughs> yeah, Briar's just dissing everything. Shit. Oh, I mean, sorry. you're talking I about Zelda Breath of the Wild. No, I'm talking about Destiny 2. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I, I went on and picked up PUBG for the Xbox One, the, the vanilla Xbox, the fat VCR Xbox, mind you. And for days, I've been, you know, really mulling over whether or not it should be a purchase that I should make. And I've been watching Digital Foundry. And, and kind of looking at the reviews, and I've, I've been listening to gamers more so than anything else, uh, people who stream the game, and they're saying that, you know, this game is getting a lot of hate, but it's hella fun on the Xbox. And I even know quite a few streamers who, who, who stream this game, and that's what I've been hearing from the actual people playing, that the game doesn't run as good as PC, not even close, but it's still extremely fun and accessible for people who play on consoles. Now, I do have it on PC. I bought it on the PC, and I can tell you right now, it's night and day the way they run. Um, the Xbox One version, it's running better than it initially was because they're patching it like every week. Yeah, so it's it made is, big strides. Like it's it's already since... on patch five or six right now. So yeah. they've been doing a lot of work. Ooh. Yeah. So they've been doing a lot <laughs> of work. Uh, but it is not the PC version or even close to that. The graphics uh, are so low. It's lower than the lowest setting on PC. Uh, you know, I, I was just playing a few minutes ago and I was talking to Kate. I said, look, look at these rocks. It looked like gray carpet i was like what is <laughs> what is going on but i was able to, to you know to actually get into the game and play it in the way that suits my play style and i'm a console gamer and and i'll you know what i'm going to accept that i'm the console guy here i do have a pc i'm going to buy me a gaming pc because that's what i do but i think i'll always be a, a a console guy i'll always have a controller in my hand and i do understand that you can plug controllers into your pc but for me, it just feels more natural for me to just play the game on a console. But uh, overall, playing this game now on the Xbox One, I can't wait to get done with the show, believe it or not. 
so I could jump back into it. You know, I'm, I'm really figuring um, it out. I'm digging are you my playing this solo or are you playing this with Kate or with one of your boys? Like, uh, how are you playing this solo? Really? So you're enjoying it as a solo game because but yes. it's quite the opposite on PC. Like, I mean, I don't know you guys impression, but I find PUBG infinitely more enjoyable when I'm in a group. Like I find solo, it just it, it doesn't have that same appeal. It's like a different least. game to me, solo. Yeah. It's, to me, well, solo, it's almost more like a horror game where it's yep. it's so quiet and you're you're running around trying to loot stuff, but you never know where there's gonna be somebody like popping around a corner. You know, it's it's much when I play with a squad, it feels much more like a tactical shooter where we're we're gearing up, we're getting we're making plans, we're we're fighting other people, but it, in solo, it almost feels like a zombie game or something where it you, is pretty you know, terrifying. It's, yeah, yeah it's terrifying. Yeah, it's I mean, that uh, feeling you're, of, um, you're being alone. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're inside a house, and then all of a sudden, you hear footsteps or you hear a motorcycle, and you don't know which direction it's coming from. You're trying yeah. to figure out, you know, who has the the drop on you. It is pretty, but at the same time, it's kind of exhilarating to me. It used because, to scare me, but now, yeah. like, I, I become more of an aggressive player. And when I do solos, I'm like, man, when I when I down this guy, he's out. <laughs> I know he doesn't have backup, you know what I mean? So I'll hop no I'll try knocks. to hop. Yeah, no I, knocks, I, no knocks baby. Mm-hmm. Straight, straight kills. Deadly That's all. fucking accuracy. Yeah. <laughs> and see, Vision. this this really goes against something that I normally I would never do. I never buy games twice. I don't like doing that. I used to do it all the time. When I first got my PS4, I bought two Call of Duty Ghosts. I bought, you know, all this stuff because I was only digital. But now having it on PC, it's great because we can play together. Yeah. Now I have it on console. I figured I'd bite the bullet and go ahead and jump on it. What well, are you guys? I, let me let me ask you a couple questions because I'm, I'm actually really interested in this because I I think this is exciting that the, this game came out for the Xbox and I'm hoping that it improves to the point where Same. it becomes like a really popular game on the Xbox because you know it it's a fun fucking game and more people should have access to it. But what is when I watch this game being played on the Xbox? The thing that stands out to me the most is the wild inaccuracy people have with the weapons. Like it, it looks like they're just like kind of spraying almost in a circle around the enemy. Like there's no yeah. there's right. no aim assist was, whatsoever, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's something that I found uh, when I first started playing the game. I was I, I, I was going to the options. I was trying to see if there was something I was doing wrong because I I get in gunfights with people. And then, you know, the, I'd be spraying just around them. It was like I couldn't control exactly what I was shooting at. Yeah. And it was very frustrating. I was like, wow, uh, is this game going to be this this way forever? And then I started going to first-person mode. Completely different. Yeah. Completely oh, really? Okay. Different. I heard that's Com- where it's at. Completely different. I mean, whenever I see people now, you can play in third person. But if you tap the left uh, bumper or the left trigger, you'll automatically pull your gun up into first-person mode looking through down the scope, down the sights, and you'll still be in third-person mode when you drop it back down. So that's what you need to do whenever you see somebody. Much easier to shoot. You can articulate, hit them in their, their leg, arm, head, forehead, wherever you want to shoot then. But if you're just playing in strict third-person, that needs to be addressed. There, there has to be some degree of aim assist because playing that way, you'll get handled. It's like uh, luck of the draw. You and know, you, you never you know gotta... who's going to win. You got a base Xbox One, like a it's not a launch day Xbox One, but it's a launch year Xbox One, right? Yeah. It's not the S, it's not the X. Yeah, it's, it's and, and it's running good on your yeah. on your one, your, I mean, your standard one. It the graphics, I mean, I'm playing on a 4K TV with HDR, and, and yeah. you really you really see how those shitty the know, graphics are. <laughs> it, it's really bad, but uh, I mean that's not why people play that game. Yeah, you know, the it, graphics it's, it's even totally on PC not. arguably are not great, right? Yeah, like yeah, especially when the game. We were playing a lot of it in the summertime, and I think the game looks a lot better on PC now than it did back then. But it didn't look great back then. I mean, it's arguably still doesn't look great. I mean, it's gotten a lot better. It it's, I mean, it's not well, winning any awards on visuals. So <laughs> no, it's not. I, I think you know, it's it's a rare kind of uh, situation on a console to play this type of game, other than what Fortnite. And for me now, having this on the Xbox and having Fortnite on Xbox and PS4, I'm going to play this. To me, it's just a it's a better game overall. Uh, I, I think Fortnite's great, but now playing this and actually figuring out what the hell I'm doing because I don't do mouse and keyboard. It's very it's hard for me to play. Yeah. But a controller, once yeah. I figure out what a button does, I'm I'm fast. I'm able to 
transition into you know a different move and do something much quicker. And it, it makes a lot of sense to me. And you were saying that you you would like this game to be a big seller on the Xbox. It's already sold three million copies on the Xbox. Wow. Yes, it has been super successful. And that, wow. was, you know, that, was, that was three million by the end of the year. Wow, worth qualifying. That's that. incredible. <clears throat> There's it's, it's halfway through January now, so it's. It's Probably still, it's, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. two things that drove me away from it. One is the frame rate, and two is watching people try to manage their inventory because mm. it's it is painful, man. Like one guy's like, I got an AK, and the other guy's like, I got an M4, and he's like, trade me. And it took him like a minute, minute and a half just to like swap out all this stuff and well, more than put everything back on. And these guys were quick though; they were quick at it. Like they were pressing all their buttons and stuff, but like it was still painfully slow. One thing that that has attracted me to the game, like Briar said, is it seems like a lot of people just are potato aim. Yeah. yeah. Like one one guy got down into a field and his buddy just ran out there, <clears throat> was getting him down. And I feel like it was like that cartoon where the bullets were flying over and making like a silhouette of you. <laughs> silhouette of and he's just sitting there looking around and you can just hear pop, pop, ding, ding, just all this stuff. Gets his buddy up. You think they'd run. No, his buddy just starts bandaging up. He's just standing there looking at the guys. Looking over at him, hold on one more. Let me get one more in, and then they run back, and it was it was so funny. And eventually, a guy on the other team just ends up getting a car and just mowing straight into him. And apparently, there was a like cars are really uh, really armored right now on the console version. Oh, really? So they're like toning them down. Yeah, I think they think that was in the recent patch. But I mean, this dude just get, they're like, fuck it, we can't hit these guys with bullets. He's got in the car and just drove over to him and fucking ran him over. I was like, I want to yeah. get in on this. That's that's yeah. something I, I've noticed too. I told you guys when we were getting ready d- during the pre-show that playing on console and watching people play and the way people play compared to PC, it's a completely different world. Uh, I've been in gunfights. Should gun we buy and- this game and play it for Revolver Plays? Like, I'm I'm seriously considering it. I mean. How fast can I get a Zim 4 delivered? That's my question. <laughs> yeah. Amazon, two days, bro. Right? Uh, we should ban the Zim. We've got to all be potatoes in unison. We have there to was, be awful. There was okay, a guy, I'll ban the Zim. <laughs> there, was a, there was literally a guy inside of a bathroom waiting for me to, to come in to see what was in there, and he was standing behind me. I got shot twice in the back and then quickly exited out the door. Then I, oh came, back around, I came back around, and he was like looking at the wall like he didn't know where I went. And then by the time he came back around, he was dead. But I've had gunfights with people who are back memories. 25, so bad. 25 or 30 feet apart. And, and, you know, I play more games than probably a lot of people. I'm hitting this guy, and I swear I didn't get hit once. He shot like eight times. And I was like, wow, these people don't – they're playing it like, you know, Call of Duty or something. And I think that this game is more tailor-made for the mouse and keyboard. And so they're trying to transition that feel to the PC to, to the console and for people on consoles it's very very hard to, to figure it out when I first started playing it I didn't know what the hell I was doing as far as shooting people yeah. there was two guys shooting at each other and I'm shooting and I, I don't think I hit either one because I gotta, the- to, I gotta dig my Xbox out of the closet I think this this sounds like something I need to experience <laughs> for myself USB charger <laughs> get the old USB charger out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I think this might be fun Man. what is it it's it costs thirty dollars on Xbox it's, it's thirty like bucks that. yeah. Brian, uh, man, there's an old proverb that says, "In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king." So, yes. you may well clear up, you know. Well, well, check it out. You guys know I'm no savant in this game, but I mean, the game before we came to the pre-show, I was sixth place before I failed, and I think I've been in like the top fifteen for like the other four or five games today. So, I mean, I'm actually killing people. I'm four and five people per game, nice. and that doesn't happen on PC. So. I think I want to get much better. I'm having no, a lot of don't, fun. Don't, don't, don't do yourself a discredit. You kill people on PC. I mean, the fact that they were your teammates is is one thing, but you know, you, you got some kills in there. No, Gary. That backhanded ass compliment. I, I think God the only, damn. <laughs> the, only time, the only time Beastly heard a shot was when I shot him in the face when he was coming out of a door the other night. <laughs> you sure did too. I killed one guy that day. And that was like the first legit kill I've ever had with you guys. There was a guy who was, remember, I was laying on the ground. And there was a guy in front of me and didn't know what the hell he was doing. And I shot him and I killed him. Yeah. And you guys were like, what the fuck was he doing? Yeah, that was the <laughs> only other kill. But I did come, there was a guy coming around the corner uh, when we did Revolver's Plays. And I, I did take someone out. So that was Hold my that shoddy like Don Gotti, man. Just, mm. yeah. wow. Got him. Right. Exciting <laughs> times, exciting times. For those who are new to the show, 
Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. You can become a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast (laughs) at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar's channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the video format or the live feed, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. And that was the longest intro ever. Welcome to Revolver Live. We got some great topics to get to. I think I kind of rolled over one. Steam rolled one already. Yeah, what did. We... yeah that was our big finale. So the rest of it's downhill from here. Oh. That was it. Done. Exciting. That was the finale, huh? Ooh. Man. Shit. <laughs> kind of early. Wow. Yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. That I was a quick... we've mentioned dicks once. <laughs> Shit. Oh, we definitely have. With, yeah, um, we did. Prior. Yeah, oh, game okay. sung quick. Yeah, oh, right. yeah with the you dick. Get, you get it. You get it. The, the, the yeah, dick. Gary. Gary got us covered. Yeah, uh, came in strong. Joystick. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> the joy dick. The, the first topic <laughs> is Destiny Two to receive pretty significant updates, and of course, this is exciting news for the people who've drifted away from the game over the, the past few weeks and months. Who would like to get started with this topic? Um. You know, this is my topic, but Gary, you want to roll me out on this one, man? I feel like you're kind of better at, I'm kind of awkward I mean, at rolling through these and spend too time on certain ones. So why don't you just roll us through these uh, or uh, just kind of let us know maybe what we shouldn't, maybe if you want to listen to all the changes and news and stuff on them, definitely check out DCP. But the reason why I had the entire TWAB in here was to basically just kind of give us bullet points and maybe like what yeah, some sure. of our favorite things about the update is. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to to buzz through the big bits, and I guess we can just stop and talk shit about the stuff that we think is good or bad. Um, like Wilson said, it's not a news podcast. I'm sure you're not not here to find out the details on exactly what's happening on Destiny, but what is happening is the Eververse is being scaled back. Um, significant changes and more loot from the Eververse is coming into the game, and I know that's been something that we've all wanted, campaigned for. I mean, Briar started yeah. a movement um, around it. Sure did. This story. Started the movement with the YouTube video. Tess it did. must die. I mean, Tess I saw him die. Storm, storm in the Shit. Bastille with like Fully you know, a severed head of Tess on a banner. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that's pretty obvious. Like Eververse, like it's so dumb. Everybody hates it. Nobody wants to fucking work for a couple hours and be like, okay, let me turn this in and maybe I'll get something I want. And then like you get it and you don't even remember when you got it. It's dumb. It seemed like a no brainer. We've been talking about it for months. It's yeah. about time. Yeah, I think I think as a community we got basically everything we wanted from this, right? It's from the from you know the community outrage as a whole. I mean, I think very few people actually thought they would just get rid of the Eververse Trading Company, but when you go into the negotiation, you aim a little high. Yeah, <laughs> you accept <laughs> you accept you know uh, mi- yeah, yeah. middle ground, and mm-hmm. you know they're they're making some changes that not only. Not only is there going to be more of the loot that was exclusive to the Eververse trading company available from in-game rewards, um, but also the stuff that you is available in the Eververse continuing on, uh, you'll be able to actually buy it with with agency. You won't have to rely on RNG. Like so, if there's armor there, theoretically, it looks like you'll actually just be able to buy that piece of armor instead of having to just rely on RNG right. to continue, you know, hoping you get the armor and keep pen- spending money. Uh, so hopefully I mean, it's a, it sounds good on paper, I mean, but I'm sure they'll fuck it up somehow. I mean, I hate to say that, but uh, hopefully the they don't. On this, I mean, we could go through each thing line by line, but I think it's probably better to discuss it like as, as a whole, you know, yeah. the, the piece, yeah. what we, what we've got. And, I've seen, I've seen it in this chat here, and I've seen it on the forums, and I've seen people make videos around it saying, this should have been here at launch. This is too little, too late. This is there. This is this seems to be a common theme. Um, yep. And what I'd say is, I'm sure, you know, I have, I have no clue of knowing what went on at Bungie. I have no clue how they develop games. Developing games is not easy. We can say that categorically. And what I'll say is, I'm sure that every good idea or most good ideas that we've had as a community and that you see listed here were things that Bungie would have loved to put into the game at launch if they had the capacity to. I think the fact that we're only getting this now is illustrative that there was significant development problems that we are not aware of with the game and that we are now, yes, I think, you know, everyone's got a fair right to say this should have been there in the game at launch. I think 
a lot of things could have been in a lot of different things when they were released and you know in, in, in an ideal world they would be but I guess what what we can see now is that Bungie is not lacking ideas and creativity to deliver them but I think that they lacked the capability at the time that they needed to do it I mean I, I don't know what do you guys take on that I think that you know us saying oh that you know why did they not know this I think they did I mean I, I agree I mean they I, they are a couple steps ahead of us. They know how games are developed. They, you know, they know some of the things we're gonna like, some of the things we're not gonna like. But like I understand like people's frustration with it, man. Like we've been super patient, and all during Destiny One, we've been waiting, waiting for changes, waiting for changes, and we finally get them. And we even said at the end of Destiny One, this is what the game should have felt like at launch. You know what I mean? Like, and then Destiny Two rolls around, and everyone's on that honeymoon phase of oh, the game's great, we're having a really good time, and you know, everything's awesome. And we, we generally were, I'm still having a good time, but like, I'm just exhausted, man, from just having to wait all the time for these changes and stuff like that. And, and like, I'm happy that they're being a little bit more open and communicative or community, like communicating more and things like that. But it's just like, come on, man. Like I know some of the stuff's coming in January that we talked about with Eververse and masterwork armor and more unique raid rewards with like raid perks on the weapons and stuff like that. But you know, we got stuff coming in February and spring and fall or of 2018 or sooner. But it's like, man, I thought fall was going to be like, you know, the Taken King, you know, like a big a big rework or as Tefty's calling it, the Taken Queen. You know what I mean? Like and it's just I'm happy that these changes are coming. But I'm just like, God damn, man, like I don't feel like they get the free pass that they did with Destiny 1 either. Destiny 1 felt like a company that was you know, reaching out for something that nobody had ever done before. And yeah, they're going to fuck up along the way because you know, they're forging new ground with this game. Mm -hmm. Right. Destiny two. It, you know, you don't get that. You don't get that benefit of the doubt there. And then, you know, to just start moving stuff from destiny one into destiny two, it's, I don't know. Like, I kind of agree with Wilson. It's just exhausting. It's like, we're mm -hmm. going through this again. And there's other stuff here that's like really exciting, you know, but it's going to be a long, long, long road if you're a Destiny fan to get like the game that you're hoping for or the game that you were hoping for when Destiny 2 was being talked about. Well, if you ask me, I think that Bungie is in, in a very precarious situation because consumer confidence is so low mm. right now that just doing incremental steps to, to lull people back in, I think they can't, I think they got to go balls to the wall to try to appease their consumer base. There because is one thing beastly that's happening right now that if you're a destiny fan, you've got to be excited about. And that's Chris Barrett. Uh, Chris yep. Barrett is on Twitter right now and he is saying all the right things. And if he's going to follow through with what he's saying, I got to say, like, I am extremely excited for the future of destiny. Uh, he's talking about, you know, uh, balancing weapons. He's talking about changing the way uh, mods work. He's, he's talking about changing the way Crucible works. He's talking about changing weapon slots. Like, I mean, he's making, he's talking big. Making you know, snipers and shotguns and fusions great again. You know, yeah. literally is what he said, making them very powerful again. Fusions feel great. Shotguns feel good. Snipers are awful right now. They at least need a buff yeah. in PVE, if anything. But he is saying all the right stuff, man. And I hope he's going to, deliver on it because yeah. i mean it, it we all know actions speak louder than words you know i mean we've heard it all before we're listening we're listening i'm ready for we're doing we're yes. doing i think that's what chris that barrett is saying right? yeah i agree i, I, I feel I like that's what he's saying yeah and the thing is is we've got to wait and that's the exhausting part that you're yeah. referring to it's like yeah yeah they're working on it, but we're going to have to wait. I, you know, I was excited to see 6v6 coming back, Rumble yeah, coming back. Rumble's not coming back till fall. Like, mm. wow. Fall? And perfect for <laughs> Crimson Days or whatever. Yeah. I think it's yeah. time to bring it back. I don't know. I mean, just looking at the whole list there and everything that's been said and other things, I feel like there's a lot of, I don't know, there's a lot of um, straining with, with, with no shitting really there's it's kind of a difficult analogy to say like you know we've got the community who are demanding a lot of bungee and rightly or wrongly so it does doesn't change the fact we've got the game that we've got we can play the game that we've got or we can play 
other games. That's it, the thing, though, with Gary, is that when I do play the game that we've got, I have fun. A lot of that yeah, is because I play with sure. you guys. Like, in all mm-hmm. honesty, right. right? Is I enjoy spending time with you guys and shooting shit. Like, the other night we jumped into Crucible uh, at, like, 8, 8 p.m. at night. Friday night is, like, we... I had played the raid. Me and Wilson played the raid. We both got off, had some dinner, came back. We played a little bit of Crucible, and we were just having fun, fucking shooting the yeah. shit and fucking up, you know, enemy guys. You know, we were just playing quick play and racking up big kill games, and that was fun still. Uh, let me ask you guys a question, okay? Uh, Mr. Acosta just mentioned this in, the, in the, the comments, but what AAA game out there takes away, you know, very enjoyable uh, aspects of their game just to bring it back a few months later. What is the reason that, that Destiny is doing things like that, taking away Rumble and taking away different uh, modes just to bring them back later they, instead of leaving it there for the, for the gamer? They they did the same thing they did with Destiny 1, whereas they, they were midway through development of Destiny 2, and they basically said, we don't like where this is going. We're putting new people in charge. We're scrapping some of the stuff we got. We're going to develop some new stuff. Like they basically had like a year and a half to develop the game. Yeah. A lot of the quality of life changes that happened in destiny one were already while De- destiny two was being developed, you know? So they hadn't even gotten any feedback yet on how this stuff was going to be received. So they didn't even put it in the game. Like, you know, they were, mm-hmm. the game was, you know, less, you know, about a year out when, Taking King came out, or was it Rise of Iron came Rise out? Iron. Yeah, I mean, Rise of Iron just, came with a lot of stuff. Like, maybe it's just my fatigue in hearing it, but I don't know. I'm just taking a step back and looking at the entire situation that we've got. I don't understand why people making the claim this should have been here at launch is going to have any impact on the material situation it either for us, for Bungie, just sour for the community. Grapes, but it, it's like, yeah. uh, <clears throat> it's okay for people to be mad too. It's okay yeah. for people to just be fucking mad. You know, like I that's all right. I would have been happier if the game would have just came out in March with Osiris, the new expansion, and we would have had multiple betas to play a lot of this stuff. Like, we need a, a what, what do they call those, uh, public test servers? You know what I mean? Like, even if it's just a playlist. Yeah. I mean, this is what we're thinking about doing. Here's a playlist. It's called public test. Go in, have fun, uh, leave your feedback here. Try not to be too big of a toxic dick. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that would help so much. Like, I don't understand why in 2018, like, there's such a disconnect between, not even really a disconnect, but, like, the the speed at which some of the stuff can be done. I understand that games like Fortnite have a smaller dev team and can make group decisions faster that are more heavily impactive on the game. And, may, you know, Bungie having a decent-sized studio... Stuff has to go up the ladder and back down the ladder, and yeah. somebody might not give the right information so- somewhere in there. And it's just, it sucks, man. Like, I love the game to death, dude, and I've defended the shit out of it. And as much as all these changes make me happy, like, you know, ex- exotic uh, masterworks, like, no doubt, you know, that that's awesome that they're doing that because right now I'm not equipping exotics because they're not making orbs. You know what I mean? Like, and it's cool that a lot of these changes are coming, but I think when people say this should have been there at launch, I think subconsciously people are saying, damn, I wish we, I could have waited another half a year yeah, to a year for this to come just, out. And I'm one of them. It's just like feedback and the way that we get it. I mean, noise is noise and, and noise is great, but it's the fact if you're shouting at a developer and it's the same way if you're defending a game, I think that's toxic in its own right. But if you're just shouting statements that develop a lot why didn't you do this what triple a game doesn't do this things of that nature i don't know my view is if you don't like something that bungie's doing tell them the thing you don't like if you say i don't like how focused this game on the eververse is it's a fair comment if you say i don't like the limited pool of strikes you've got fair comment but telling them you've got to change it back to this you've got to do this this shouldn't have come out like that we're not really having a dialogue there we're just venting and like brian said it's fine to vent but i think but it's me just speaking for me. I'm tired of hearing venting. If you want to be, I hear you. If you want to give feedback, if you want to give direct and and heavy feedback, shoot away, do it. I think everyone should. But if you just want to make statements, again, there's like, it's it's not going to make anything change for anyone. It might make you feel better momentarily, but I don't know. Well, I, I think it's also important to, if you're giving feedback, say, this is something that I enjoyed. I had fun with this part. 
and then say something that you don't like. You know what I mean? Because mm. it's really hard for them to go off of if you're like, I don't like X, Y, and Z. And you're you don't critical, tell them yeah. that you liked A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. You know, like, so I feel like it, it, it cuts both ways or, you know, there's a little balance to it. You get, obviously mm -hmm. there's something about the game you enjoyed because you picked it up in the first place. So let them know about it and then let them know the stuff that you don't enjoy and try to re uh, refrain from using words like fuck wad and, you know, things like that. And they might actually listen to what you have to say. I agree. I, I agree with you, man. But I feel like that's like people saying this should have been in the game. That is a collective that has been everything that we think should have been in the game. We've been asking for since the game came out. And I think people are just tired of reiterating that same thing over and over and over again. So then people just sum it up with, it should have been there at the beginning of the game. Because I mean, the community has pretty much well spoken on this, that a lot of this shit should have been in there at the beginning of the game, because that's what made destiny one successful. You know, this next update is, you know, destiny two slash destiny one, you know, like, and it's, it's two steps back. When we're all, we're all looking for a new game and wanting to go forward, and you know it just sucks that you know I feel like it's kind of tied. The development of Destiny Two is is being tied down by Destiny One. Let me you ask know? you guys a question. There, a lot of people are discussing like uh, what they should do with weapon slots, like moving forward. A lot of people aren't happy with uh, the two primaries. They they have they currently have the kinetic, the, pr the energy, and power, and kind of all your one shot weapons are lumped into power. What do you guys think the path is moving forward? Because initially, if you had asked me two months ago, I would say they're not changing that. But when they added six v six, I'm like, well, they really said they weren't going to change six v add six v six to this game, and now they're adding it. So now I feel like almost anything is up for grabs. So if you're going to yeah. change it, what would you guys change it to? I mean, I hear a ton of armchair devs in forums who seem to have it all worked out for Bungie um, yeah. already. They're just sort of sitting there going, oh, man, if these guys just did this, it'd be fine. Um, I actually think that people don't know the solution. They know what they want. They want to feel powerful. They want the power weapons that they favor to be viable. Mm -hmm. um, I actually really like kinetic and energy as I a concept. Too, yeah. I like the fact that I'm not... Right, the problem with um, what we used to have is... I've got a sniper rifle and I've got a hand cannon, let's say. Um, I'm out of sniper ammo. I am now ineffective at anything that isn't a hand cannon engagement. At least now you've got the option to say, right, I'm going to have a long range weapon. I'm going to have a short range weapon and I'm going to have power that's, I like it. Um, I'm going to have power that's somewhat viable. I think if there was a way to keep the system that we have without massively overhauling the game, but just make a bit more distinction between what makes an energy weapon and what makes a kinetic weapon. I think that's a starting point. And then in the power, I think you need to better, I think make power more readily available, which is something that they seem to be doing, you know, adjusting the volume and, you know, whatever, the, the distribution of power. And I think if you make it more readily available and also I think sniper rifles and, and just a, an idea you got off the top of my head. If you want to make sniper rifles more viable against something, you, you need to make them compete with the other available things. So rockets, for example, you don't necessarily need to move snipers into the, the energy slot. But let's say you gave snipers something that increased their power level and not flinch and things like that because that triggers people. But let's say when you had ammo with a sniper and you ADS, I don't know, you had like Widowmaker's ability where you could see through light terrain. And you could track the people coming into a lane beforehand. So Ooh. then you could anticipate them moving in and hit them before the, they flinched you. And, you know, this would be like, hey, you know, I, I, you know my sniper is really effective at something. And that's a way easy. to make... It'd be too yeah. easy in Destiny, it, it especially if you pop the controller on. It doesn't on. have to be that specific example, but like... For if, sure. If it's they just the power. I, I think when you pop power, it should just drop for everyone who's close by, like it did before. I hate to go back to the Destiny 1 thing, but, you know, it, I, I don't feel like... Sure, a fourth weapon. I've heard multiple solutions. Fourth weapon slot. You know what I mean? Cool. Sounds awesome. Uh, move snipers and shotguns to the energy slot. Well, they're still one-hit kill weapons. You know what I mean? So they can't yeah. do that. You know what I mean? Um, well, I mean, maybe you could, but you'd have to work. I don't know. It's not my job to find the solution. It's my job to say what I want and that I want to feel powerful. I mean, it's just about making them more desirable or like, you know, fusions. They're an experimental weapon. So why not make it that all passively all fusions have like a high percentage chance to refund the magazine on a kill? 
you know, something that just keeps it like you know synergy of that weapon. I think that if you made them more desirable and made power weapons more readily available, you know, yeah. half the time that power comes onto that board, or put two extra power crates in. So every minute there's four power crates on a map, not two. Just anything like that, just something that spices it up a bit. Um, I think asking for a complete overhaul, saying go back to D1, is just reflecting to what you know. If you did that, I guarantee two months down the line from that, people would be saying, fucking weapons, look at this, people just shotgun apes and snipers. and it would Just go back to what we had. People are never going to be happy. What, what if uh, your power weapons were able to be picked up by teammates or maybe upon one death it, it respawns with you? Like you're able to keep it one more time if you die, if you haven't used it. Would that be a good? I think that would be awesome. You know, rather than challenge. I think, that, I think there's multiple avenues that they could go about it. You know what I mean? But like, this would be a perfect time for that that test playlist. You know what I mean? Like, hey, one week, try this, try right. this, try that. We're gonna look at our analytic data, and then we're gonna see what you guys think about it. You know what I mean? I think the only thing wrong with snipers right now is they don't do enough damage in PVE. They do enough in PvP, which is fine, but it's just a flinch. That's all it is, man. You don't need snipers to get it. Snipers aren't fun to use. That's the problem. Snipers are a blast to use when so, you're not getting flinched at. You know oh, what I mean? That's, yeah. that's that's the problem. When five guys come around the corner, and like I said, one hand's on the dick next to them, and the other one's got to meet a multi-tool, and they're just, <laughs> you know, going off, and you can't hit nothing, man. Like, reduce the flinch. Sorry for that visual. Uh, <laughs> reduce the flinch. Maybe make it so if I'm near an enemy who picks up a power crate that I get some, maybe not all of the power, but maybe a little bit to wet my whistle, get out there, get a couple shots in, and get that fantasy back. Sniping was, oh my god, it hits every pleasure zone for me anyway, dude. I love it, man. Like I wasn't, I wasn't the greatest, but I wasn't bad at it either. And it, it, I could see myself improving as Destiny One got closer and closer. To there is a sound that comes out of a Wilson. <laughs> A Wilson after a snipe, that is, that hits my pleasure zone. Can, can, the, I, heard, I, I, yeah, I, heard, I heard that same noise come out of him after the Acrius three piece. That oh was a very yeah, noise. ooh with a shotgun too, man. You right. That's the first time I've ever had that feeling with a shotgun. That's a good shotgun. That feels amazing. Like that to me is what a shotgun should feel like. Yeah, the Acrius. Well, is... if they're gonna be in a power weapon slot. They should be powerful as shit. I mean, because yeah. they got to go up against goddamn rocket launchers, and that to me is really the problem with yeah. with with that whole paradigm in PvP is that rockets are just too fucking good. Compared to snipers and fusion rifles, rifles and grenade launchers, even and and shotguns, so Swords. I'm actually a huge fan mm. of the four weapon slots because I do like the kinetic and energy slot. I think that's fun. I like being able to have a hand cannon and a submachine gun, or an auto rifle and a scout rifle. Like having two Same. primaries makes me feel like I've got more options. Right? It, it just makes me feel good. First and if they could, if they could separate out um, rocket launchers with uh, the other current power weapons, the stuff that used to be energy weapons like uh, fusion rifles and, uh, and, snipers. and snipers, then you also can have it separate out when the ammo is available. So you can have slow delivery of ammo for rocket launchers, but slightly faster for shotguns, fusion rifles, and snipers. Um, sniper rifles, I think, just have to be fixed. Like, I don't understand why they're so shitty right now. But they they feel yeah. really shitty. They're not fun to use. I know Wilson finds them fun to use, but I don't find them fun to use cause, <laughs> just because they're so fucking hard to use and they're so useless in PVE. Like, yeah. there's, there's just no fucking reason for me to pick up a sniper rifle right now. Agreed. So, to me, I I like that solution uh, because I get to keep my my two primaries, which I find fun and I find rewarding, but I also get I. I get more available slots. Like it, it doesn't just because I want to do max DPS to a boss doesn't mean that now I just can't run around with a shotgun or a sniper, right? Mm. So I think I think the the additive thing is the better way to go here. A lot of people are voting for this like return to Destiny One with the with the primary special and and heavy. Yeah. And to me, it's just we had that for three years. Yeah. It, it was good. It was restricting. I feel like it was restricting compared to what we have now. And I would like them to just break out, break out the power weapons into two different categories, 
and then they can balance those independently of each other, and rockets will always be there for doing big DPS to bosses or for doing mass, like, you know, huge area of effect damage in PvP. Are, are you thinking, like, light power and heavy power? Like, two yeah, different guess, categories I, like that? Yeah, kind of. Basically, is One's have faster a, and one's more powerful and slower? Basically, rockets would be a category of their own, is basically yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, and then grenade launchers, uh, basically the rest of them, you could have, you know, you could... You could have more like green ammo or something, and that green ammo, or I guess we're already is green. Ammo. Give it another color ammo, yellow, yellow ammo. Yeah, and that would control the pace in PvP of how fast people can get sniper ammo or shotgun ammo, like they were doing in Destiny One. By the end of it, I think that I think that's a cool idea because I don't want to lose something because people want to snipe. I don't want to lose my primary right. energy weapon because people want to snipe. So I think additive the, is a better um, way the to go piece here. that Paul Tassie put that. out, um, I think it was a day ago, on his concept for Destiny item sets. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was fantastic. And, and it's something I wanted to, to pimp out a bit here. As without featured going in into, Forbes magazine? Uh, as, as, as Briar Rabbit himself has been. Um, <laughs> yeah, Paul was looking at what makes Destiny special. What what's the, And it's the, it's the acquisition of loot, the chase for loot. And also, you know, why do people, what do people want to be in PvP? And that's more powerful um, and have builds and have unique elements that they're strong in this certain way. Um, he's just put an example down here. But you know, like the division, you've got sets that you build and you get a set. And even though the weapons in the division are fucking boring, you know, they're just mm -hmm. guns, they just shoot. The fact that you get sets that change, fundamentally change the way that gun performs or your ability set perform based on the armor set you use. So you can be like this particular class but now this class is using this armor set that makes it work in a certain way same yeah. as diablo diablo you can be a demon hunter and you can play 40 different ways as a demon hunter and not because your perk sets are i mean yes you can set your perks and your skill trees differently but the armor sets themselves change it and he said like his example is imagine having something like dredging yours gunslinger set Right, so it's themed in the law. You know, you, if you're a gunslinger, you can collect the dredge in your set, where like two set items would be three mobility, three set items would be like health regen when you roll dodge roll, so health regen immediately starts. Four would be hand cannons poison enemies, so hand cannons become a thorn effectively, and then fourth would be your golden gun becomes a thorn, which does double precision damage and permanently poisons PVE targets. So it's like, how much more interesting now is the gunslinger class, and how much more interesting is that player and you could have eight nine ten different sets of armor that all make the hunter unique and that's just for like the subclasses there um for me i think that that would massively benefit the pve game because you'd be chasing sets but then also you think how fucking good would this set be in pvp and you know i've got to give up my exotics to wear this set but i've now got a set bonus for that. What do you guys think of maybe going down? You could that I even take it up. That's yeah, insane. I love it. Yeah, you could take it even a step further and have one of the pieces be an exotic. You know what I mean? And like, because they're talking about separate making exotics stand out again in fall. That was one of the things they want to address. That'd be the perfect yeah. time to do it. Make one, you know, like the um, Saint fourteen. Make a set, the Saint fourteen set, and you know the helmet is the the end of that set, you know what I mean? And it synergizes with, uh, with bubble, you know what I mean? Something to do with your bubble. Like it, it'd be perfect. Like just make one exotic piece be a part of that set. And you build off that piece of exotic armor with legendaries. I think that'd be a great idea. It'd be awesome, man. It, it a lot of diversity and I mean, I'm sure it'd make balancing a fucking nightmare, but Hey, that's some of the fun stuff, man. When for a month or something, something's just, destroying shit in pve you know what i mean and, and completely throwing off the balance but like that's part of the the charm of destiny that we I fell in with that, yo this week this gun's broken as fuck like you better balance, hop in and check it out there's balance and imbalance <laughs> right if all of these were really really powerful set bonuses that you had to work your ass off to grind this five piece set and then were strong but you could be counted you know you've got that strong gun singer they've got someone like an idea down here for like the dawn blade where you know i'm going to list every set item but when you when you die wearing the osiris dawn blade set you could summon an avatar of yourself the same way like a warlock self rest you get like 15 seconds where you get all your abilities and things back and you can revive a teammate you know as, as a thing so 
th- there could be lots of ways that you play that you think, oh, this guy is wearing the Osiris gear. Watch out, he's going to sell for Ez when he dies, you know, because you know, you can see his set bonus and it makes you feel powerful. It gives you something to chase. You're working really hard to get right. something that you can then deploy in Crucible and PvE. You know, in the raids, you might be like, yeah, this is the best PvE set. I'm going to wear this. Um, you know, you could couple it and say he's got down here. Well, if you're in the Osiris gear, why not have it where if you also wear the Vigilance Wing, you get like a special unique ability because that's a weapon tied to that. I, I think using the equipment they've already got, the you know, without having to say you've got to change it back to D1, you have to change this, change that. I think they could just work with the blueprints they've got here to make something really special if they lent more into the RPG aspect. But they're reluctant to do it because it's a shooter first. Well, know. they also they also... I mean, they said this on the Bungie podcast when they released that. Was that November when they released that? Yeah, October, yeah. November. Um, is that they they really targeted the casual crowd, right? And this kind of this kind of idea, I think, would really please the hardcore crowd because it not only would give us something to grind for, but it would also give us a lot of customizability. It would give us ways to kind of really feel like our play style is being incorporated into the character we're building. Like, there's all sorts of good stuff. That comes out of that system that Gary, that Gary is proposing, and I, I really support it, but it's just not copacetic with the casual game that they wanted to make. When I envisioned Destiny Two, I definitely before it came out, I envisioned it being like kind of moving in this direction because this is the direction we've been asking for. It was it was just this is it, Gary. This is why people are like it should have been in the game from launches because we're just so fucking shocked. We're just yeah. so shocked. I mean, I think something like that, and it's not my idea. Again, back to it was Paul Tassi in Forbes right. referenced the right. article. I think that that is actually less hardcore than what we got. Them doing mods 2.0. Mods are fucking complicated. They're difficult to understand. You have a spreadsheet to understand what is available and what you can do with it. Collecting a piece of armor that says on below it, if you get two pieces, it does this. If you get three pieces, it does this. And it might drop from public events. Or it says, you know, this only drops from Mercury public events because it's this. Bad, bad example. That's one Make public event. Make it work event, like, but... the, uh, like the, um, uh, the Crucible. Like we've been grinding for, for the Crucible ornaments. helmet. Yeah, like yeah. the ornaments. Make it like the ornaments where, you know, you, you just gotta you gotta grind a specific event to get a certain piece of armor, and then because you don't need to customize it, you put it on, and you're wearing that armor piece that does that thing when you wear it with something else. Yeah. It's it's exactly what they want to do, which is um, curated builds, which they did to our skill trees. Bungie made our skill trees curated. I think armor sets that have abilities that are curated are a far easier thing to balance than saying this mod gives your gun firefly. Because that that opens up a whole world of, of variants, yeah. um, and that puts off the casuals. But hey, you know I'm not a game dev. I just that's my own take on how to keep it appealing to casuals, but give the hardcore something to grind and make PvP more interesting. What I want is more RPG in Destiny Two. It's like I, I want that would be great. I want more yeah. customizability. I want more. I want more of my personality to be reflected in my character and. I feel like we got less of that in Destiny 2 than we had in Destiny 1. When I, when I first realized that, here we are again, I can't believe it's not in Destiny 2. <laughs> when I first realized that we could, didn't even have a character creator for Destiny 2, I was like, really? Like, why not? Like, we made these characters three years ago. Did yeah. you ever think that we might want more options in Destiny 2? It's, right. so, it's so surprising. That's why it keeps coming up, Gary. That's why we keep saying, you know, it's just because it's so surprising. It's shocking. For sure. I, I'm just trying to make suggestions and ways to no, be constructive and move oh, forward. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, no, totally, definitely. man. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I feel like we can go on all night oh, for about sure. this. I can talk about you know this I mean? for hours and hours. Yeah. You do so it. the podcast Every is now week. seven hours long. <laughs> Clear your schedule, guys. We're going through the night. <laughs> um, let's move on to topics. Yeah, all let's right, move so on. So the next topic is mine. It's something I thought of about a week ago. Uh, one of my favorite YouTube channels to watch is Digital Foundry. Uh, Led Better and Team, they routinely scrutinize and analyze the latest in PC gaming, graphics cards, consoles, and the console generation. So right now, really popular consoles that they're looking at are the Xbox One X, PlayStation 4 Pro, and of course, PC GPUs. And what they do is they look at games, they check the frame rate, the resolution, and they basically analyze the shit out of every game. Yeah, the and, and it's they look at Switch games. Yeah, the PC Switch games. too. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. I mean, right. the best part about them is they're never wrong, and because they're never wrong, no one ever sues them. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, they're t- that's totally not true because they're, they're being sued record. right now. What are they uh, being but, sued for? 
they're being sued basically for what defamation. It- Basically, they said that a developer's game uh, ran at a locked frame rate of 1080p, and it wasn't true. This game had a uh, dynamic resolution, and um, it was shown later that the developer was right, and they said the Digital Foundry basically slandered their game and hurt their bottom line. Uh, what and game basically, was it? Uh, Red Out. Red Out, yeah. Out. What was it? I'm sorry. Red Out. Uh, Red it's like Out. a driving game, Red Out. It's, I think it's like a, a fake F-Zero. <laughs> yeah, and we're so gonna get they, sued now. By the way, Wait is it a Switch game? Right. Was it one of the launch Switch no, games? I think it's like PS4, Xbox no. thing. It's not yeah. Fast RMX. No, it looks like Fast RMX. So this is this is this is a new precedent. This has never happened before. And for the most part, Digital Foundry has been on point and, and accurate with their reporting of what games are running, their frame rates, patches, and updates, and whatnot. And so my topic is. How do you guys think that Digital Foundry has affected video gaming and game development? Uh, has it been a positive thing for the gaming industry and for consumers in general? I tend to think that it's very a very positive thing for us as, as people who play video games because we don't have the technology to heavily scrutinize a game. None of us can look at our, our televisions and immediately know what resolution we're playing at. We have to go to the, the the details of the game or go to Digital Foundry or some other source that has analytics. But through Digital Foundry, now we're seeing certain games underperform or not perform as well as their uh, competitive counterparts. And due to a lot of the, their uh, reporting and their analyzing, uh, developers have come out in droves and released patch after patch after patch to improve um, unsightly aspects of their game. So I want to know what you guys think about Digital Foundry, barring the fact that they're actually being sued right now for uh, improperly reporting on a game. Do you guys think that they're a positive force in gaming, and do you think they're helping out game development and consumers in general? They're really definitely helping they're out being... consumers. They're, they're like the yeah. consumer reports of video games right now. It's like, you know, a game comes out, and Digital Foundry takes a look at it and says, okay, uh, here's how it runs on the PS4. Here's how it runs on the PS4 Pro. Uh, here's how it runs on the Xbox One, S, and X. And then here's how it runs on the PC. And then they'll compare all three versions. Uh, also with hardware, you know, like they'll... Here, you know, the Xbox One X comes out. Here's how it runs Tomb Raider. Here's how it runs yeah, The Witcher. Yeah, they've how done it, that too. You know, like, is it... They they help you make a decision as a as a consumer and like that kind of a uh, resource is super valuable. I I really like the website. They actually uh, when the Xbox One S first came out, they did in depth comparison uh, against the vanilla Xbox, and that was how I found out that the Xbox One S was slightly faster than the original because they they go through so much to figure out this this information and give it to consumers. Gary and Wilson, how do you guys feel about Digital Foundry? Do you love it as much as me? Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan. Um, I watch a lot of their work. Um, I mean, they're, they're obviously so respected in the industry that Microsoft invited them to debut yeah, the Xbox X. One X. Um, so they were the guys that broke the news about the X's performance. They were able to showcase it. And, you know, I think they're so trusted as a resource for performance information that Microsoft knew if it came from them that people would believe them. You know, it's not marketing hype if it comes from Digital Foundry. Um, what I really like about them is, like you say, the not so much what they do for game development, but for me as a consumer, um, I feel like DF or any site like that that, that gives me a tangible um, real world example of how my hardware is going to stack up if I change. Like it was reassuring when I moved to the 8700K processor to see exactly which games multi threading is going to make a big difference in and, and where it's not. And you know, what, how much, because Intel will tell you, oh, you'll get a 30% increase in games, but what does that really mean? That might mean one game on one scenario in a certain lab environment did that. Um, I think Digital Foundry help you. In terms of game development, um, I don't think they make any difference on it, if I'm completely honest with you. I think that they, I don't think devs are making changes for Digital Foundry's purposes, but I think Digital Foundry do help to drive a narrative that consumers get behind so if consumers say this game runs like garbage i've seen it on a digital foundry video um i think in a way that they're they're kind of driving developers to work in that way um but i think developers want their games to run well anyway and someone someone in the comment section frog doc said this and i 100 percent agree he said digital foundry is helping to keep game developers honest 
you you got to put out a quality product. You can't skew the numbers because you know your game is going to be scrutinized. You know, you can't go under the resolution you say you're going to do. You can't say you're going to be a 60 uh, frames per second locked game now because you know it's going to be heavily scrutinized. Basically, every AAA title that comes out in some way, shape, or form slides to Digital Foundry. And if the developer touts what this game is going to be able to do, Digital Foundry will be able to, you know, immediately tell whether or not they're telling the truth. And so I agree that uh, Digital Foundry is keeping these developers completely honest because up, up until the point where this website, this YouTube channel uh, existed, there was not really anything in the mainstream quite like it that would uh, scrutinize games and, and let you know exactly what was happening. They they, they have a, a tool set for that they can use for both games and for hardware that seems very valuable to us as a consumer. And when they, when they apply it and they report on uh, their findings. I find it very interesting. I find it very interesting. I find it actually, it does, it influences my buying. Uh, there's other yeah. websites that do this. Uh, Gamers Nexus is another one that when I'm yep. looking at uh, PC hardware specifically, is they, they go in, they do a thorough detailed analysis of, you know, something like a case, you know, like a computer case can have a huge implications to how well you spend $2,000 worth of components that go inside a hundred dollar case. And depending on which case you bought, your performance may be drastically different because you know a case that looks beautiful may have no airflow and all your shit is getting hot all the time and running worse. Yeah. Um, so like sites like this, I think are great. And you know, in a world where I feel like the press is constantly being threatened, <laughs> like I, I do find some value in you know in the reporting of these things. And you know, I don't I don't know. I don't know, like what a lawsuit like this can do to Digital Foundry. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how, how, like if they reported something wrong, are they are they liable for that? I don't know. That might be a big problem for them. Well, I mean, Digital stuff's Foundry reported, stuff's reported falsely all the time through all sorts of media outlets, and they don't get fucking sued. So I don't know why they should be. <clears throat> I don't know. I I feel like that's that's just like an excuse for someone to go after them. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Digital Foundry's shit on our game or whatever, so nobody bought it. Like, yeah, but if they did falsely report, like if they did they falsely report, right yeah. If they did falsely report that, you know, like if I made a game and it ran at a steady 30 frames per second and Digital Foundry came out and said it runs at 20 frames per second and that cost me sales and it was erroneous, I'd be fucking pissed. Could you yeah. prove that it cost you sales, though? I mean, I'd never Probably. even heard of the game. I had, never even, I had never even heard of the game or the fact that they were being sued until today. You know what I mean? So, like, it's not... Like, sure, I do... I, uh, first of all, I, I do love Digital Foundry. I think it's awesome. Anything that educates a consumer um, is great. I don't have the means to test all this stuff. I don't have the money to buy 10 computers and see how everything runs or how all these games run on different systems. So it is cool that that information is readily available, but back to them being sued, like stuff gets falsely reported all the time. I mean, and people, there used to be ad campaigns and I know things are different, but I mean, people used to just straight up lie about other people's products. And that's not, they're not competition and stuff like that. But where do you draw the line? Pepsi, with, we're looking with, at you. With, yeah. Genesis does what Nintendo don't liars. You know well, what I mean? Like, like, where do you draw the line between the Pepsi just... challenge was fucking bullshit from the get go. <laughs> That's a rig. Digital Foundry on their Twitter page. I mean, they've actually apologized for this. Yeah. So uh, they said on their Twitter page on January 7th, apologies to three, four big things for missing red outs, dynamic scaler on Xbox one X. It's it scales from 1080p to 1944p and doesn't lock at 1080p. Our article has been updated, and we will be retesting the title on Monday. I think as well, it wasn't just that they um, kind of misreported it. Um, and we're getting quite in the minutiae here. It was more, more me having to dig at the uh, the topic that you put in, basically. But the, the fact is, um, the article they put in around Red Out was a smear piece. Yeah. Like, I think the title was something along the lines of, why doesn't Red Out run properly on the PS4 Pro or something like that? It was a real, it, the whole point of the video was to say the developers have not done their job on this game. You guys and, suck. You know, yeah, it was pretty <laughs> okay, much well, that. Let me ask you this then. If all the changes come to Destiny 2 yeah. and I don't like them and I put out a fucking review and I accidentally say, oh, we don't have an emote slot and we do have an emote slot, can Bungie fucking sue me? Like, no. 
So I, I don't understand why they're being like big deal. They made a well, mistake. We'll I, th- I think they could actually. I think if could, you I... if you if if you put out opinion, then you're fine. But if you make a factual or if you try and make a factual statement that is false, then I think you are. Then you can get in trouble. Yeah, I don't, why is not half the internet being sued? Then? Well, because it's <laughs> stupid. It's it's just fucking bad press to be yeah. suing people who review games, right? It it doesn't right. make any sense. Like the, these guys who are suing digital foundries, they're not making any friends right now, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So that, right. that that's you. why probably. I hear yeah, you. I, that's fair. And, and to play devil's advocate, which is normally Gary's point of view, I can kind of understand where they're coming from. If if I worked hard on the game. And I tried to optimize it for all uh, platforms. And then, you know, a well-respected outlet puts out a factual uh, piece basically saying that it was much better on one than the other. And they skewed things and made things appear true that weren't. I think that would affect my bottom line. I think that would affect all our profits, at least on that that uh, platform. And I'd be highly upset. And, and I think it's it's well within their rights to do whatever they they need to do, whatever they feel they need to do to be recouped for that lost compensation. Because at the end of the day, it is all about, it's all about the dollar, man. Yeah. But uh, how do you decide who was going to buy the game until they read that? How do you decide how much money is compensated? Cause you don't know, like you could have sold just as many copies. Yeah. Well, you know, people came out, you know what I mean? Whether the article came out or not. Well, I mean, there's already been precedent for this. People have sued for lost income for myriad reasons many times and it's usually True. up to a judge to mm-hmm. decide how much that lost income would be and I so we're firmly button our heads up against our knowledge ceiling here do we have knowledge ceiling on anything i, I don't think so uh, <laughs> yeah i didn't pass I think, the bar i, I don't have any legal going. knowledge <laughs> it's like yeah. an inverted pop- it, it's just it's we're just in a very strange time with yeah, technology true. right now. Like there's a lot of growing pains and gray areas and, you know, things like that. Like everyone's making a big deal about digital foundries being sued for a mistake. Meanwhile, people in Hawaii got a missile alert the yeah. other day and that wasn't even, you know what I mean? Like that's a big fucking that's deal. A, do you know what? That wasn't, again, for people <laughs> oh that weren't God. aware of that in the news, um, there was an iPhone alert, one of these, you know, emergency messages Ugh. that you have to get from your carrier that went out to every citizen in Hawaii with an iPhone that said, emergency, a missile is incoming for Hawaii. Please seek shelter. This is not a drill. From the government, <laughs> right? You should, you, so, you, you should be the voice up. for that. So you're very calm. That came oh out. Let what me just correct here. Let me just correct here. 14 minutes later, not a text, an email went out to say, there's no missile. Please don't be alarmed. <laughs> oh my God. 14 30, minutes. 38 minutes later, a text message went out to that effect. So you've got people in their bathtub in a pool of their own feces for 38 minutes. Because <laughs> I would have been in one. Well, no, that's shit it, everywhere. Again, when you read it, it said that families were advised that the safest place in the event of a missile strike is to lay in the bathtub with your family because that's the most, you know, reinforced and protected place. So there's been families for 38 fucking minutes laying in a bathtub. That's I just awful, don't understand dude. how anyone's not getting sued for that shit. Apparently, long story short, again, they're not entirely sure what happened. I'm pretty sure Putin's got something to do with it. But anyway, someone pressed <laughs> the wrong, someone pressed the wrong fucking button. Yeah, that's what that's it came what down to. Someone like, pressed the wrong button on a, you, on a console somewhere. Yeah. Do you see my point? Like, like someone can get sued for for falsely reporting something, which I get when there's money involved. But then something like this happens, and it's just kind of a oh, oops. You know what I mean? Like, I, it, that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. It's like do, there's bigger mistakes so. out there that that need attention. Right. I put my mind to this the other day, and I thought, has there been any benefits from that Hawaii thing? And I wonder, I just wonder how many guys got laid as a result of that. You know, <laughs> they've just. <laughs> this is going to be a baby alive. boom in nine months. <laughs> this is our last night alive. <laughs> and I've been checking just, you out for months. They've been sitting there with that coworker. They've been looking at it and going, "We got we got 20 minutes. Let's let's just do this right here, right now. That's right. it. Just go on." Look, I'm gonna work. die. You're gonna die. Let's you think die, you just die with a, you think yeah. you think that work, or you just die with a black eye? I wonder how many thank you letters have been sent to you. I mean, you might government. die with like eight black eyes before you find the one that you're <laughs> <laughs> running out of time here. Right? We're gonna we're gonna go for quantity, not quality here. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing that sprung to my mind is how many people were laid on the back of that message. That, that, that would have been my first that thing that came into my mind. 
I hate to be a downer, but man, that was just oh, that's terrifying. It sucks people had to go through that, man. Oh yeah. That sucks. There was a there's a Reddit thread I was reading today that uh, it was a kid who confessed his undying lo- love for his high school crush. And she he was all excited because she reciprocated that love. She was like, I love you too. I've always, you know, like I've always loved you. And then they found out it was it was not real, and she texted him back saying I figured you were dying, so I just wanted to make you feel that's okay. Up. That's so fucked up, dude. That poor guy. Now he's talking about kill us, talking so. about a roller coaster of fucking emotion. Shit. I mean, he's probably all the better for it now. He can just move on with his life. Gary's right, though. Had he been there, they might have been like, "Hey, we got twenty minutes." You know what I mean? I mean they might have been. I think she might not have got laid. I mean, it depends what year they're in high school, but I'm. Pretty sure he could have snuck a hand job out of that one, at yeah, least. Right. You know, old fashioned. I mean, die, die with, old a, fashioned. Die with a, a boner and a black eye. That's horrible. <laughs> That's how I go to bed every night. I get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> a boner and a black boner. eye. <laughs> Time to go to sleep. What? <laughs> That's how she puts you down. That's your town all PM. What? <laughs> A fucking left hook on that Mrs. Rabbit, we, man. It's think, nasty. <laughs> and for those wondering, I, I think that's going to be the, the title of this episode. <laughs> a boner and a black eye. Look for it on iTunes. And that is how Digital Foundry are affecting the future of game development. <laughs> <laughs> I planned it like this, guys. I planned it. it was all the plan. There, I'm sorry. I kind of <laughs> threw one into outfield there. I apologize. I like it. <laughs> Should we move good. on to... The Switch Factor, the direct dust off. Who saw that? I fucking love the Switch. It's so I good. didn't see it. I didn't see I it. Too. So Nintendo, everyone was like, uh, Nintendo were, were top world class trolls on this one. So everyone was hyping it up. The the new direct for January was going to be like the second E3 for Nintendo. Like people were like, oh, it's going to be like Smash. We're going to see Pokemon footage, probably Metroid Prime, definitely all this. Like everyone was getting really hype about it and saying it's going to happen on the 11th. Going to happen on the 11th. So Nintendo, all the way in the lead up to it, knew people were expecting it. They started like trolling. They put on like the Nintendo Odyssey parrot, you know, the secret parrot who's like, squawk, squawk, got a secret. Not going <laughs> to tell you about it. Then they just posted like random pictures, like a little hot dog guy. Uh, they posted a picture of that on their Twitter. Then they posted a picture of Chibi Robo being on fire and nothing else. And people were like trying to work out, is this like cryptic clues? And no, it was just <laughs> Nintendo straight trolling. <laughs> the <Vince laughs> then, on the 11th, they didn't announce it. They just dropped a Nintendo Direct Mini. Um which has people kind of disappointed because they were expecting this Big Bang Direct, which Nintendo never promised them, let's be honest. This was just Reddit circle jerking themselves into a frenzy. Um, But anyway, it being a mini, we haven't got the announcements that we want. And the reason I wanted to talk about today, I didn't want to go down the list of games sequentially, but Nintendo needs to sell 20 million Switches. Are they going to do it with this half one 2018? Because... There's some good names on there, but there's not the heavy hitters. The why do they have to sell 20 million? Because that's what they said they were going to do, wasn't it? They oh, were going to do another okay. 10, so they were going to sell 20 million um, the by the end quarter? of this year. Oh, by no, the by the year. end of this year. And but okay. this is this goes right the way up to May, so this is there everything before E3. Okay. Uh, we've got. I'm just going to list the names off, and then if there's anything here that piques your interest, say it. World ends with you. Remake of the DS game. Pokémon Tournament DX DLC. They're adding more Pokémons. Good times. Kirby Star Allies got a release date. Dragon Quest Builders got a demo. Ooh, yeah, Warriors. I want to talk about that. I heard that's phenomenal. I uh, it's basically like a uh, third-person uh, Minecraft set in the Dragon Quest Quest's like world, universe. Really? Yeah, and you're not a hero for once. So you don't just really? wake up and you're like, oh, you're the hero and blah blah blah. You find out that a lot of these people lost their um, ability to be creative. They don't know how to be creative anymore. Oh, it's so like, you're, it's like the Lego movie? Kind of, yeah. I was huh. thinking more like Footloose. <laughs> it blew my mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, you're Kevin, Kevin Bacon, <laughs> Footloose. you got to teach them to be creative once more in a small town. Exactly. exactly. Teach them, you teach them with dance. Yeah, so it's kind of like Kenny dirty fucking dancing. fucking Loggins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like dirty dancing. Uh Highway but to the I thought it looked really cool because I mean like it there are elements of it where you're like, damn, they definitely pulled that from Minecraft. And I you know, I'm not afraid to admit it. I fucking love Minecraft, dude. This I game has been out for a while though. What, did it come out on the Wii or what was it been on? Because it's it, it's been really PS4, a popular game. Vita, PS4? I think as well. Okay. Mm, so this is Vita. just them moving it. 
the Vita, mate. Um, <laughs> so it, the demo is out now. We can all try it. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Is it got um, multiplayer horrible. like Minecraft does? Ooh, I don't know. That's one thing I didn't look into, but it's it's essentially a third person Minecraft set in that universe, and it looks like it's got more RPG elements than Minecraft. We, we need to be the first team to ever do this. We can set a new precedent and play a Switch game online together. I don't yes. think anyone's ever done it. A million times, yes. I don't, I don't think that. that's physically possible. Shit. <laughs> need a uh, flux capacitor and like some... <laughs> yeah. Look, if we're all friend codes... Like game and link we tune cables. In, yeah. We like to tune in our FM radios to a certain frequency. <laughs> we'll be fine. Long wave. We need like the... Uh, Breaker Breaker radios. Um, yeah, so Dragon Quest Builders, Hyrule Warriors Ultimate Edition, effectively oh, support that? of the That's 3DS. That's like the Dynasty Warriors with Zelda in it? The 3DS version and the Wii U version, all the content, everything they released in a nice bundle with some extra bits ported. It's good. It's what it is. Mario Tennis Aces, this time this, with a big story I want. Mode. I love story mode, Mario, Mario Tennis, tennis games. I haven't yeah. played a Mario Tennis game since... Was that on Super... Uh, no, it was on Mar uh, Nintendo 64. 64. 64. Oh my god! Mario Tennis and Mario Golf are amazing games. They're yeah. both really fun. It's got a um, feature-length single-player campaign, which isn't just play tennis against a load of enemies. Uh -huh. It's an actual RPG story that you oh, go and really? solve things through tennis. Yeah, watch the trailer; it's really cool. And it's coming um, in the spring. Spring. Oh, oh wow! All of this is coming out before May or in May. Um, Ease Eight. Again, if you're into that, it's uh, basically like Xenoblade. There hasn't gonna been a, been a good Ease since uh, Ease Three, Second Story. Ease Three, Backdoor Ease Only. Um, <laughs> yeah. The ones on the were they, was that on PS One? Those on PS One, the original Ease, Ease Three, yeah. Frank Check Edition. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Check. Break job, does break ease. job, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> break um, job. It'd be good. If you like Xenoblade Chronicles, you'll like this. It's already out on the Vita. Just and ease four. it in there. <laughs> ease eight, no lube. Yeah, uh, just ease it in there. Damn. <laughs> Mario Odyssey, this is worth talking about. Did you see the competitive hide the balloon mode, which sounds like more dirty filth? Oh, I like the sound of this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's called hide it mode uh, with <laughs> Luigi. Poor huh. Luigi. Um, yeah, it's it's effectively speed running, hide and seek speed running. It's like the perfect stream game. It's designed for streamers. Huh. So let's say let's set the scene. You and Wilson play hide it uh -huh. online. Yeah, he's I, got. I'm willing to play some hide it with uh, Wilson. Yeah, as long as <laughs> I'm I'm willing to provide it, not hide it. So one of you, one of you, one of you plays as Luigi. You're hiding. So you've got 30 seconds on all of the maps that are available in Mario Odyssey. They just bring the full map. The map. So you've wow. got 30 seconds to find locations on that map. You've got to plant five balloons in 30 seconds on that map. And then the person who finds them has got 30 seconds to find your five balloons. So it's how far can you get? Where are the sneaky places you can find them? And it's, it's just built for speed running. Oh, wow, it's that's so awesome. Good. Yeah, that sounds like fun. So oh, that's yeah. that. And obviously so. some skins and whatever um, is there. But that, that there itself, I think, is a great way to bring people back to the I game. I think I would now. like that better than the regular game. <laughs> Shut up, bro. <laughs> Hide the balloon. Hide the balloon. Look, that sounds Mario, like fun. Mario Odyssey, <laughs> Mario Odyssey for you Americans, has got complex movement mechanics. So if you know how to move the little guy, you can get him to places that other people might not be able to in that time. Yeah. So I think Maybe the be... best one is like hide something in plain sight that's really hard to get to. Right? Just hide it right behind yeah. them when they start so they go forward. <laughs> you know people are going to do that shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you've got SNK Heroines, which is effective. It I looks like... like Dead or Alive kind of thing. It looks a bit ass, to be honest. It's a beat em up. No, TNS. Titty and ass everywhere. Yeah. Nothing but the Dead or Alive chicks fighting. More Mario Rabbids deal. See, they're bringing Donkey Kong into it. Donkey Kong's going to be in there, and he brings a whole new load of abilities. That game is getting supported so much. It's like The Division or of, of <laughs> thing, like Ubisoft. It's a do Ubisoft this game. Really? They, they just, they just keep it, supporting games. Is forever. it a good game? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Epscom with Mario. And they've they're putting more and more stuff into it. You've got competitive multiplayer, cooperative multiplayer as well. Um, a really difficult campaign. They added expert mode, and they're now adding another character. Gary, have you ever Great. heard XCOM called UFO? Uh, yeah, there's UFO declassified or something. There's another one. Gary, that was a. Somebody was yes. talking about UFO, uh, enemy unknown in chat the other day. I'm like, the second half of that title sounds so familiar. And then I guess it's called XCOM UFO in some regions. And it's called UFO. XCOM. UFO Defense. 
Yeah, that is, it's a, a different spin-off game for the PS3, oh, okay. uh, I think, or might be PS4. Um, but we've got that. We've got Payday 2 has got a date. It's Payday 2, but we know it's coming Feb. Faye and Celeste, two indies, we can move on from that. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is getting a port. That is big, because that game was super good and super yeah. hard, and no one played it because it was on the Wii U. Like, four people owned that console. Yeah. Um, I never played it, so yeah, it's good. I'll definitely be I liked there. it. But what they've done is because the game is super fucking tough, and it's not the demographic of Nintendo, they've added Surfer Kong. There's like a Hawaiian Donkey Kong who's like basically playing the game in God mode. Like you can surf on the water, so you can never die. He can like mm. hover and jump and do stuff. So it's like I like the sound of that. Yeah, <laughs> anyone can enjoy. It. How pathetic! <laughs> I so like being cool. God mode. And then the headline. <laughs> This release, which actually isn't exclusive. This is insane. Yeah, it's it's not exclusive, um, and they do have the inferior version. But it's the first time that Dark Souls is going to be playable on a portable. You get Dark Souls remastered with all the DLC. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. I can't wait. I'm ready for that I on a Switch. Wait. I hope yep. that game succeeds wildly too, because I, what I want is for Nintendo, the Nintendo platform, the Nintendo Switch, to start getting third party development and not. To, not for it to be a risky business like it was for the Wii, Wii U, hell, for the GameCube. I, I'd like to see people like really embra- developers really embracing that that console. So if Dark Souls sells, great, that'd be amazing. I'm like, I'm like kind of on a on a Switch. Yeah, I'm gonna kind of piggyback what you said uh, the other day, Briar, about people breaking their Switch because that game. That's how they're gonna move 10 million more units. <laughs> right right that's there. That's that was beautiful, switches. Wilson. That was beautiful. <laughs> right there. Well thought out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Treating that thing like a fucking frisbee, throwing it out the window, and skipping it across the lake. <laughs> Briar goes, "Ooh, the you have to resist just fucking whoa, throwing that thing, <laughs> <laughs> fucking because it's just so small and it could be out of your face in an instant. Yeah. Just whoosh." You know. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the secret news there as well, which came out of Japan, is Japan have announced a collector's edition Dark Souls trilogy pack um, for the PS4. But there's placeholders for it on the um, Xbox, PC, and Switch as well. So what? Yeah, Japan, you can get it. It's really nice. It's got like a, a bonfire and a night bookend and a load of other cool shit with it. Um, so all Dark Souls games are going to be on the PS4. It's also 60 frames on Xbox, PC, PC for the first time, 60 frames because that was a 30 frame lock game. Um, the Prepare to Die edition on the on the Xbox One X as well. Yeah, so the PS4, Xbox One X, PC, 60 frames. Switch is going to be 30, but it's portable, so it's yeah. fucking great. Um, so, oh, do we man. think that lineup is enough to keep the momentum going? And this isn't everything that's coming out, by the way. There's still other shit. Hell yeah! You know, we've got Lost Sphere and and other things there that are, that are already coming out, and, and Wolfenstein too. Um, I feel like it this... needs a heavy hitter. It needs one more. Like it needs, it needs like one of the big Nintendo ones, doesn't it? What about Donkey Yoshi? Kong? We haven't heard about him yet, but it might be second half of the year, Yoshi. And um, actual Pokemon game on console, man. Like they're probably building that right now. That's going to take some time, man. They, they could announce that at E3, and I bet it's <laughs> and for 2019. I bet it sells consoles today. Yeah. I mean, the thing that I'm excited about, about this the, lineup, Gary. The Switch for me, the little fucking magic of that game is. I play things on the Switch that I would not play anywhere else. And I don't know if anyone else has had that. Like, you're just on the Switch eShop. And because it's in your hand, it's a portable more than a console. You're like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll try that game. Like, I don't know what game I've been addicted to in bed. This is like, the hide the uh, hide the balloon again. It, you know, it's not that. Um, <laughs> Damn, I'm game, excited. <laughs> game that I've been playing in bed. I, I'm such a fucking nerd. Letter Quest Remastered. Have you guys played that? No. So fucking good. It's like Hangman. Um, you 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 play a little Grim Reaper, and you got to walk along, and then you get like a, a checkerboard of like three by six letters, uh, like you know, twenty eighteen letters, um, and you've got to like score points by like getting the most complex word to beat up the little anim- enemy, the creature that you're trying to kill. You know, and you get points for stuff like that. It's like an RPG. Oh, it's really? Like Scrabble, like Scrabble or Hangman uh, as an RPG. Let I'd never quest. play that anywhere else, but it's on the Switch, and I play it like every night before I go to sleep. It's like so. Last unique. year, last year Switch had Zelda and Mario. Those are system selling fucking games. Sure, are. I don't yeah. see that game on this list. I don't know, Briar. Donkey Kong Country might. You might know, it's a game that came out last generation. It's a remake. They listened to. Yeah, but nobody played it. 
If they listened to Revolver Live, they would have heard the suggestion of virtual console with online play. That would have probably mm, moved some stuff. That that's would something some... else. To say. They have not mentioned virtual console here. However, yeah. um, that could be a, a direct of its own. You know, why would you cram your virtual console into this? Yeah. You, know, you could just drop something in March and say, virtual console guys, please be excited. Um, and then like, you know, you, you've got hype again. Um, I mean, this isn't all of the year, bear in mind. This is Yeah, this the is first the first months. half of the year. Yeah. I mean, I'm got... buying Mario Tennis. Like, I almost don't even need to know anything more about that. I'm just buying it. The, the but way I it don't looks... see a Mario or a Zelda here. But I, th- I think more so than anything else, Brian, there's something here for everybody. There's people. There's a game here for the hardcore. There's a fighting game. There's a, an adventure game. Yeah, there's, but, a sh- there's a shooter. Well, yeah, I mean, Yeah, there's games for everybody who already owns one, but I don't see any system sellers. Right. That's what I'm you saying. Got... Like Dark, Dark Souls, to, Dark Souls right, remastered. That's a remastered game. Like, is that selling you a Switch that you can play Dark Souls on it? You've I'm been sure. Play I'm that sure on PS3. You've been able to play that on PS3, PC. It's coming out on PS4. It's coming out for the console you already own. Like, you don't need to buy a new console to play that. It's not an exclusive. Doggy Kong Tropical Freeze came out for the Wii U. Um, Payday Two. That game's been around for like ten years. years. <laughs> SNK Heroines Tag Team. That's a pretty niche title right there. Yeah. Ease, Ease is probably big in Japan. I don't hear a whole lot of people talking about it in America, to be honest. I, maybe I'm just out of a loop on uh, Japanese role playing games it, at this place. That point. particular game is really highly reviewed on the PS4 is and it? Vita. Like, it is a good game if you're into that. And oh, if you so played that's a port too? Chronicles. Uh, yeah, it was out on the PS4 and Vita. Um, same as like Lost Fear is going to be another big JRPG um, to follow up set sooner. I mean, if I've you, seen a lot of ports. Hyrule Warriors is a port. Dragon Quest is a port. Uh, Mario Tennis, Kirby Star Allies. I don't think that's a port, right? No. No. The, the Super Mario Odyssey. I mean, I don't see an update selling consoles again. Like, I don't know, man. If, if that Dragon Quest game can even remotely scratch, like, a, a Minecraft itch, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just that little, just even remotely scratch it. And Because I can tell you right now, if you're not playing on PC you're bored with Minecraft. Sure, you yeah. might be building some awesome stuff, but you would love some new content. You know what I mean? And if if it's even remotely close to it, and there's adventuring and like, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you know, like a, even like like side quests and you know, yeah. items to go get and farm for. I mean, it, it resembles Minecraft a lot. Like even to like the squares that you you know you're cutting out dirt or wood or you find a patch of like rubies or diamonds or something. It's very similar. So dude, I mean, Minecraft, dude, uh, that game is a lot of fun, but like, unless you're playing it on PC, there's just not a whole lot to really do anymore. So uh, this, that could, this list almost know, man. just reminds me of 2018 in general. It's like 2017 mm. was just so fucking chock full of amazing Big games. games. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm just not seeing it for 2018 yet. Like there's a couple things I'm really looking forward to. Did Far Cry? Far Cry, I think, is coming out this year. Yeah, that I'm looking forward to. Uh, did um, Red Dead Revolution, Red yeah. Dead Redemption, get pushed? It got pushed to March 2019. Redemption Two is coming out this year. It's definitely coming out this year. It's like I hope it didn't get pushed. I heard rumors that it did, but nothing credible okay. that I could find. I'll look real quick. I mean, the thing about the Switch is you you have got other things. Like I was saying that you've got like Owlboy, Bayonetta, one, two, three. Um, the one and two ports, obviously three coming out. Hollow Knight, things that I think people can play on other consoles. The fact that Switch is portable gives it a unique selling point and lets it go toe to toe against another port. You know, you, I could play Owlboy on the PC on Steam, or I can play Owlboy on a handheld. I'm going to yeah. play it on a handheld straight yeah. away, no question. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that you know. They're not done for the year. This isn't the full list for the year. Oh, no, I, no, I, no. I don't think there's any question that they're going to sell another, sell another 10 million of those things. I mean, based on last year's lineup, plus, you know, new games coming out. And if they do release a virtual console and their online service finally goes live, I, I don't think there's any any doubt they're selling another 10 million of those things. But this list isn't super exciting to me, personally. I hear you. I mean, that's the sentiment. That's why I wanted to share it is because people were super hyped for it. And then it came out and people were like, it's cool, but it's not, you know, it's not what we wanted. It's not Smash. It's not Pokemon. It's not um, yeah. Metroid. I think, I mean, well, well if, if that stuff's coming, I think it'll they'll announce it later this year. It's going to be, yeah. 
Those are Smash, holiday games, that, right? Smash is definitely going to come this year. I, I think it has to. That's going to be a remaster of the Wii U, though, right? That's all I they need. Not. Hopefully it should be a new no, it should be a new one, man. I mean, I think, you think Smash, so? though, yeah. I think Smash could take because if you remember, Smash on the three DS and Smash on the Wii U had different maps. They were like unique, like the three DS yeah, maps right. and the Wii U maps were unique. If you yeah. did what they're doing with Hyrule Warriors, you did an ultimate edition with all of the DLC characters, which they added like twenty five characters on top of the base game. All the DLC characters, the maps from the three DS, the maps from the Wii U, and added more content and gave it a proper multiplayer. I think you've got a game there. I don't what think they did with Splatoon is they actually just changed some things and, and called it added more maps. Yeah, they called it a sequel. They could do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they just that's did great. it with Splatoon, right? That's the dream right there. It's, dream. it's true, though. Jeez. That's the dream. I mean, I Bungie to took some like things away and put a two in front <laughs> oh of the game. Oh, my God. So. <laughs> it happens. They um, they forgot to put the little dash the minus yeah. sign. Mm. <laughs> it's destiny minus two or three things that you used to like. <laughs> it's very much that. No, I mean the other. The, the, you know, I'll move on from the switch now. The other thing that I think that I've got some weird obsession with is you know I buy like every Joy-Con and yeah. unique controllers on like the PS4, the Xbox, PC peripherals. I've got no compulsion to buy limited edition ones like if they release a controller that's limited edition i don't feel like i've got to have this i don't feel it adds anything to the unit but they're so fucking genius the fact that the switch the joy cons are part of the unit just putting green ones on it makes the whole thing feel and look different putting red ones on it putting blue things on it like it, what if it they feels... start releasing like different color switch consoles <sighs> I think that the, <laughs> I want the console to do the same. Mine. I, I'm I think screwed. the console. It's like putting on different color condoms, Gary. It's 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 exciting and it's new every time. But um, yeah, I, I think that the console yeah, needs to stay the color ones it is. I buy, they only come in certain colors. It's not cost effective for them to make that proportion be multicolors. I'm the only customer. <laughs> we are one guy. One guy. <laughs> it's not bagofdicks.com. They don't just make a mold of one of the dicks. And send you that mold, do they, Gary? It pretty much, you know, I was the life model for those candies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty horrible I get. Thought. I mean, that's In why I've got them as a correct. sponsor. I get a royalty for every dick consumed. <laughs> oh, my God. Correct. Oh, my goodness. That's something I actually need to do. I need to invest in some more Joy-Cons, and I need to invest in that Pro Controller because these the Pro Controller? Are... You don't have a Pro Controller? No. Oh, I, I had, man. I had no need for it. That Pro Controller, I think, is one of my favorite controllers ever made. It's like, good. It's that good. It really? is real, real the good. The only negative of it is the um, the triggers, ZR and whatever, RR, fucking, I don't know what they are. They're not, they're like, they're analog, they're, or is it digital, whatever the fuck they yeah, are. They're, they're either on or off. button's not analog, like, uh, like, pulls. So, like, for a racing game, that'd probably be a negative, but for, like, every other game where you just want a fucking button there, it's actually better. Like for a shooter, <laughs> for instance, I think it's better because you have a, a click yeah, that's instead right. of like a push, like a long squeeze. Travel. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I like more hmm. about the long squeeze. I don't <laughs> like the long squeeze. I, I don't like get enough push. of it in the rest of my life, so I just I, I need it in the controller. <laughs> I, I, I hadn't bought one, Briar, because the games I've been playing, I, they work fine with the Joy-Cons, but I know that yeah. I'm going to be investing in some other types of games it's a I really buy... good controller you can get it to work with pc too yep oh really yeah and did you guys know that um lasts about 45 hours or some shit like it's really good <laughs> yeah. there are some people out there who prefer the xbox one controller over the playstation 4 controller those people and... are idiots well gary he just calls you an idiot <laughs> gary it's your first time no, here. i told you i have tiny homunculus hands it's <laughs> it's if you have like human adult male size hands then the xbox one controller is awful but if you have small childlike elven fingers it's perfect there's a company called hori <laughs> that's making a ps4 controller that looks exactly like the xbox one controller i've Saw been checking that. this thing out since yesterday i think i want to buy it it looks Why so would you want cool. that? because because i'm different briar shit can i just be me Fuck. no no the xbox one controller is not a good controller I love the Xbox One controller. Sorry. The Xbox 360 controller was the perfect controller, and they went and fucked it up. I like the up. Xbox One controller. I think they it, destiny I think it the Xbox 360 controller. <laughs> 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 it 
Is that a term now? You nailed it, Ray. You nailed it. And you fucking Destiny 2'd it. They Destiny 2'd the fucking the 360 controller. Shit. They sure did. But uh, this this PS4 controller that looks like the Xbox One is just it's so unique and cool to me with the touchpad on it. I think I want to grab it. It'll be available, I'm I believe. At it right now, man. It does look. It looks fucking it's awesome. pretty sexy. I'm not going to lie. I want the Duke controller. They're re releasing the Duke. That's got so, my name all over it. Here, Here's Give my thing Duke. with um, PlayStation <laughs> PlayStation versus Xbox uh, controllers. Um, I've gone through about five, six of the PlayStation yeah. controllers. Yeah. This is my original Xbox 360 controller that still works. Now listen, very carefully, listen. Oh, you hear that crunchy Y button? <laughs> Ooh, that? That's yeah. how old that is. That's, that's pretty how, good. And it that's still works. Good. This is back when I used to throw this thing, and it still yeah. works. You well, know, me, like I, I, I don't even throw these anymore, and they just fucking wear out. The so 360 if, if controller better, is best of all time. I'm telling you. My <laughs> Xbox One controllers, Briar. First of all, the battery pack in it is fucking amazing. I, I charge it like once a yeah, year. Yeah, it's but... amazing how long it lasts when you never fucking play your Xbox <laughs> One. <laughs> but let me just say this, okay? The controller. It, it's never given me any issue. I got five PS4s. These are the fucking batteries that came with. <laughs> They're not even name brand. They're yeah, like the off-brand ones. Yeah. Panatronic. What the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. Well, they made headsets. What's Buracell? <laughs> oh, I think we lost Beasley. Beasley hang, hung up on us. I couldn't handle it, man. <laughs> couldn't handle the controller debate. How, how are you gonna talk? How are you gonna talk shit about the Xbox One X controller? <laughs> I'm I'm with you though. I, I like the durability of it. I don't like the feel of it, but the fact that it lasts months longer, if not years longer, is yeah. A but point. So as long as this new one is more quality. Do you have a controller? It looks like a little pig. Look at that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a Minecraft pig. It's actually pretty cute. It's cute. Look at him. That's yours, not the ladies, right? That is mine. I went for the pink, and it's got a little tail on the back. Look at that. How cute. Oh my goodness. Look at <laughs> it it. It's got a curly cue on the back. Beautiful. So I feel like a princess when I play Xbox. That's fantastic. So, um, oh yeah, Brian, that was the worst time to lose video, wasn't it? No one except you saw the curly little pig controller. <laughs> Can't see it. If you hang it up way high, like above your floor, no, a little lower, a little lower. There it is, curly little pig. <laughs> I don't know if BC's coming back or not, so I'm not going to change the video yet. It's all good. Uh, I think it'd be a perfect time to go over to first time streamer tips and tricks. It's all this is happening on the fly. Whoa, that transition. I know. <laughs> Yo, We're don't right use Wi Fi. Tip number one. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So, a lot of people, and I, I see this all over the place, um, whether it's in Briar's chat, Tefty's, Broman, Goth, anyone. Um, a lot of people want to know how they can get into streaming and what are some tips and tricks that can give them a bit of an edge to start out with. And the first thing I'd recommend, um, if you want to start streaming <clears throat> is actually do it. Don't be like me and talk about it all the time and not do it. But, um, the first thing to start with is, um, like feeling like if you're, Focused on views and stuff like that right away, you're going to have an awful time. Like, the first thing you need to do is get used to talking to yourself and being entertaining in the stream. Um, people don't want to join a stream and see people not talking, not having fun. Because if you're not having fun, I can tell you right now, there's a lot of people in your chat that aren't going to have fun. You know, um, you don't need the biggest, baddest equipment. You know what I mean? You start out, your PlayStation has everything you need to get started right away. There's a lot of people that got started um, that had hundreds of viewers. You know, um, KJ Hobie back in the D1 days, he used his PlayStation for the longest time and he was really, really successful at it. You know, so you don't need to get the biggest, baddest equipment. You don't need the best camera, mic, green screen, um, you know, a PC, even. You can do it straight from your console. You know, like, um, let's see here. Uh, like I said, use your console before buying an expensive PC. Grow into your setup. You know, you don't have to have top of the line equipment at first. Gary Diaz, <clears throat> you know, Gary's guilty of this. Why don't you go through some of the stuff that you that you've purchased before you even 
fired up the stream. Oh, I mean, I've I've got like a professional streamer's equipment, and I have never, ever streamed. I still hold that as my record. I've never done the inaugural stream. Um, <laughs> I've recorded a couple of plays, um, but I've never actually gone on there. So now I've got. I've, I've made the ultimate mistake of, of having like, you know, two PC set up, mixer, stream deck, you know, voice modulator, um, the, it, everything that you could possibly want um, for a stream um, without actually streaming. Uh, I kind of, I, I, I dream about it at night. I, I live, I stream vicariously through um, my own fantasies. <laughs> uh, it's more of a hobby. I mean, like I'd say, the only tips I could give if we're going to, before we start fucking around and telling you to kind of like just get your nipples out is, um, <laughs> there he is. Perfect timing. I say <laughs> think about. Speaking of nipples. Yeah, like, <laughs> nipples. We're going into first time streamer tips. Did someone say basically. nipples. I'm back. Uh, look, I, I don't know what happened. I, my apologies. My internet completely just was gone. I don't know what happened. Just for a few seconds. Did somebody turn the microwave on? No. They're using the, the stovetop. God damn it, Briar. <laughs> My sincerest apologies. Uh, I walked up there and said, what the hell is going on? And my wife turned around. She was making a burger. She said, I don't know. I said, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. We moved on to the um, first time streamer tips and tricks. Yeah. So I'm just kind of yeah. do that a little bit right now. Um, Briar, when you first started streaming, why don't what was your setup like? Like like day one? My setup, day one, uh, there was two day ones. There was the day one where I just said, what's this Twitch thing? And fired up uh, Trials Fusion and just tr started playing Trials Fusion on Twitch for zero viewers. And then the second time I fired up a stream <laughs> was in front of uh, four to 500 people on Planet Destiny. <laughs> so it was... It was kind of a high stress moment for me. Ooh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. But I will say that I did start streaming on Planet Destiny with a PS4. Um, and people didn't care. People didn't give a shit. Um, the only person who had a problem with the quality of my stream was the guy who ran Planet Destiny. <laughs> oh. Uh, which which uh, made me actually switch over to streaming using a Mac. And I actually used a Mac. I, I loaded it. Windows onto a Mac. Um, so I had to boot my Macintosh with Windows on it so I could run OBS and then use that to stream. And that was a nightmare. Um, but, like, my my path to streaming has been, you know, kind of a weird one. You know, it's not the normal path. But Never from what is, I've though. watched, from what I've watched other people do, um, it doesn't matter what equipment you have or how good your webcam is a uh, voice quality i think to some extent does make a difference like you want to have at least uh i would say a uh you know usb microphone um but it, it's really about the content that you're providing is you know you watch real crafty uh go from like zero viewers to uh the top of the directory that's not because he's got a good microphone or good equipment it's because he's entertaining and he's fun to watch and he, he makes amazing yeah. plays um the same goes with half a dozen other guys that are I see in the Destiny directory all the time, or used to anyway. <laughs> right. You know, so it's it's not about it's not about equipment. It's about personality. It's about uh, entertaining. It's about gameplay. Like if you you can take it from a bunch of different directions. Like maybe you got a personality that people are really drawn to. Maybe you got you know you just get, you're doing some gameplay on a different level than everybody else is. Mm -hmm. um, but I would caution anybody to get into streaming if they see it as a way to make money um, yeah. because if it is going to happen, it's going to take years mm -hmm. and the chances are it's not going to happen. It's going to be a really frustrating endeavor if that's what your motivation is in doing it. Like it's because you're always going to be looking at numbers. You're always going to be like, you know, trying to push yourself to do something that you don't really want to be doing. If your motivation is to try and form a community and like make some friends like, I don't know if there's a better way of doing it. Like, yeah. it's a really fun thing to do is to, you know, basically, like, become part of the Twitch community and to, like, you know, use those connections to make friends or to make, fr to make friends, basically. It's just a fun fucking thing to be doing. Like, it's one of the reasons that I spend so much more time on Twitch now than I do on YouTube is because it's a really fun place to be. It's It feels like a community. It feels like a... 
it feels like a shared experience. And if you're if you're looking at it from like a purely financial thing, it's it's I think it's going to be really frustrating. If you're looking for it to be part of the community, I think it could be really rewarding. I feel like with Twitch as well, like remuneration perspective and financial um, compensation. I think as well the issue is, is spot on, bright. It some people see it as a way to you know I can I can just play games and get paid. Yeah, um, it's not really and, like that though. And the and the issue is as well, even if you get to a position where you feel like you're there, that is it's not like a career where you're always going to earn that money day in day out. Because what I've seen with the Destiny one directory is how fucking volatile that is that's like one game release or one patch away from your just income stream being savaged you know like people that were pulling great numbers in destiny one you see them now and they're still doing all right you know i'm not not disparaging anyone's career but th there's been a significant shift in directory view accounts sub counts etc as a result of that and that's not a discredit on these people are still putting on a great show. They're still entertaining people to watch. They're still good. But just through complete sheer, you know, un misfortune, their income stream has been cut. So I'd also caution people that, that see it as I'm now earning, you know, $500 a month. I can now quit my job. Like, no, <laughs> you know, unless you're in a position where if it all goes wrong, you can be financially supported. That's something else that... You know, I didn't realize the volatility of it, even more so than YouTube and their algorithm changes. Like Twitch is, you're really at the mercy of the audience that you have and the favor they have with that game that you devote yourself to, unless you're a variety streamer. Yeah, I think yeah. you nailed it too. Like it, the gaming community, our opinions and feelings change like the wind. You know what I mean? One month we're happy about a game or we're, we're stoked and then we realize it doesn't have any end game and all of a sudden it's dead game. You know what I mean? Like, and people come to your chat and dead game. And the advice that I could give <clears throat> for that is um, try to be a little bit versatile with your stream. Don't be afraid to be a variety streamer. You know what I mean? Because if you're entertaining, it doesn't really matter what you're playing. Like, sure. Like if you're entertaining and, and you got started on destiny, you know, you're obviously going to pull more numbers on destiny. But if you branch out and try other games, <clears throat> if you're interesting, people are going to watch you no matter what you're playing. Um, and this is, Personal opinion, I've been seeing a lot lately. Don't start your stream as a service stream because once that service is no longer required, you're going to see a huge dip in your numbers. And I see this a lot with Trials of the Nine carries. And, you know, these guys will pull 100 viewers, no problem, on the weekend. But as soon as Trials is gone, they're back down into the 10, 15 range. I, don't know, know, man. I challenge that, right? Because <clears throat> if you look at the IRL directory right now, um, there is a lot of streamers doing squats for subs. Um, you know, you get 10 subs and they just <laughs> do some squats. That's a service that's never going anywhere, man. That's a service. Okay, for okay. Like in-game service, like trials carries or account recoveries. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Like that's that's cool. I'm not, I'm not looking down on that. That's cool. If you want to do that, I'm just saying that I see it a lot and I have a lot of friends who do it and I hear their complaints about how they don't want to be a service stream anymore. Do any you, of your you friends know? do squats for subs though? No, but they probably should. I'm gonna. Yeah, I, I I would say that also would qualify as a service stream. It yeah. would. It would. I yeah, saw a guy. What, what was lucrative the guy's, one. What was it? Josh OG. That guy. I saw him. He was rolling blunts for donations the other day. Yeah. I'm like, what a, now we're what talking. What a job. What, what a, a fucking all star. When you, when you wake up and your <laughs> content is rolling blunts. Like, yeah. The dream. Let's let's get it done, man. Where's Josh OG hang out? I mean, what director is he in, man? Did you see the? Um, did you see the? <laughs> I'm not going to publish. Yeah, I really just smokes weed all day. That's what he does. <laughs> did you see the 76 dude? Seventy-six says I'll pull dance for subs. Now we're talking. <laughs> yeah. Consider it done. I, I tweeted out Boom. the um. I tweeted out a screen grab of him. I don't know the guy's name. I didn't put it in the clip. But the guy was just sitting there with his top off, just like a middle aged oh, yeah, guy. Oh yeah, saw that. <laughs> that was hilarious. But he had, streamer. <laughs> man, he had a bottle of Hennessy covering the left nipple and a glass covering the right. <laughs> It's just a dude, just titties out, like, you know, full on man breast. Oh, it was awesome! It was amazing. Fortnite. It was it was one of the best things. That is the ultimate clickbait. And I think talking about that clickbaiting, I'd say as someone who doesn't stream, as someone who watches content a lot and watches streamers, we've said it before. Think about why people would want to watch you. And if it's gameplay, you're like, I'm really good at this game. News, you're not as good as you think you are. There's a lot of people better than you. If I want to go and watch someone that plays good games, 
I could immediately list off the top five people in the world and mm-hmm. watch with the 30,000 other people in their stream, watch these people that are the best in the game at doing it. So I think playing the game because you're skilled, unless you're the only person playing that game or you are the best in the game, is also probably a bit of a, a rabbit hole to be chasing. You know, really have to think about quality entertainment that isn't. Uh, not as everybody can be a Briar Rabbit. You know what I'm no. Yeah, you got that right. Shit. I mean, I come to Briar's stream for that gameplay. Right, right. And and for the squats. And for the squats. And for the squats. Power squats. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd also suggest as well. This is again looking at the directory from the outside. I suggest Mixer if you can. Because Twitch is fucking saturated. That's not a bad point. Uh, Facebook, I would suggest too. I mean, I think are Facebook is a yeah. Facebook is a gl- growth opportunity because it's got there are t- billions of people on fucking Facebook, yeah. and they're getting into streaming and they're promoting it. And there's nobody fucking streaming on Facebook, so like, I would highly recommend Facebook. But mix I, it too, yeah. Fucking a man. Like why, why, why go to the place that's already fucking saturated? You can have a brand new audience. The one thing I will say though is it's very difficult to move an audience from one yeah. platform to another. Like very yeah. difficult. Um, someone in chat, um, uh, awesome question, and I wanted to address this. Um, question here: Is there a moment when you streamers felt like a slave to streaming or um, <clears throat> of a unique game to stream? Um, I can speak to this personally. Um, I did. I was really heavy into streaming for a while when I first started. Um, I was doing six, seven days a week, you know, four to eight hours a night after work. You know, it was consuming my time and I was having a really good time doing it. And I started it. It started to creep into my work time. So I started leaving work a little earlier to get home to stream or relax a little bit before. So I had time to relax and for the longest time, like I was a Destiny One PvP streamer. You know, I was always doing PvP, always doing trials, trying to help out who I could. My friends were helping me help people, and we were pretty successful at it for a while. And it did get to the point where sometimes I'd come home and I'd be like, "These people are expecting me to stream, but I don't want to," and then yeah. I, I wouldn't stream. Sleep and then the, trade. the longer you go without streaming the harder it gets to press that live button again, dude. And it's not because people won't come back because your friends will come back. If you genuinely made friends, they'll stop in and say, Hey, it's a mental thing. And you can become a slave to a certain game where you feel like that is where you are at your peak performance, but you may not be enjoying the game so much, but you still are kind of hiding it to where you're being entertaining for your stream. I would say that's extremely unhealthy personally. If, if, you can't deny the way you feel. If you're not enjoying a game, it's a good chance your viewers are going to see it, and it's just not good for your overall health. I had a, I stopped streaming because, like I said, it was starting to cut into work, and there were some nights I came home, and I'm like, people, some people are expecting me to stream, and I just don't want to, and I don't yeah. like letting people down like that. <clears throat> you know, I don't like letting myself down like that, but let alone, you know, a few people who, you know, I had people message me on Twitter, hey, you know, it's 8 o'clock. Where the fuck's the stream? <laughs> you know? And I'm like, shit, man. I was just kind of like sit on the back porch and have a few beers tonight. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll go fucking go to the lighthouse. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, like, and it's it's really important, man. If you're not happy doing it, then that's it. Yeah. You know? So, like, if I didn't, if I didn't love my job of, you know, working with molten glass for a living, like, I wouldn't do it. If it sucked and it was hard and I just hated it, like, I, I wouldn't keep doing it. You know, you... Awesome Success job, anyway. follows passion, in my opinion. Yeah. If you're extremely passionate about something, there is a good chance that somewhere down the line, you could become financially successful off of it. You may not. You may just make a little bit, you know, of money, you know. But as long as you're passionate about it, good things will come. That eventually. means that if you when do I if start you get getting into paid it for, for, for sex, then if you get into <laughs> it because it's fun. You're never gonna leave f- f- having felt like you failed, right? If yeah. you get into it for because you want it to be a financial success, then ninety nine point nine percent chance you're gonna leave having failed, mm-hmm. and it could ruin your Twitch experience overall. Like you may feel like I- I've seen people saying, like, "Hey, like I don't I don't like Twitch anymore because you know I stopped streaming and now it doesn't feel the same. Like I- you know it-, it reminds me of my failure, and that sucks. You know? Yeah, yeah." Um, that's really rough 
yeah i i've had days honestly wilson where i i've like it's you know it's been time to stream and i'm like oh, man i could just go for a fucking doing nothing instead but you know at the same time it's like once i hit go live and everybody starts fucking yucking it up in chat like it almost they bring you back it. in. i'll tell you what honestly there's been days where i've been kind of like you know you're kind of feeling blue you're feeling feeling mopey you know, maybe I should stream. I bet it'll improve my mood. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because yeah. you get fucking, you get these fucking jokers in here. <laughs> <laughs> you get these jokers in here. Fucking. Yeah. You get Gary Diaz talking about the Louisiana purchase with chili cones. It happens. Great day. It happens. I'd say podcasts as well, man. Don't just make it live gameplay. Like, podcasts, you don't even have to have an audience, you know, basically thoughts when you both started that. Yeah. You know, it was two guys on Google Hangouts just mm -hmm. talking. It's another well, way. Xbox, to... uh, Xbox Connect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that one there. Xbox Connect talking. You know, if you've got a couple of people that are like minded that want to talk to you, if you've got friends who share your passion, you, you might talk about games. You might talk about, you know, titties. You might have a, a titty podcast. You're the first ever titty podcast. That's that it. That can't yeah. be a thing. That can't be an untapped market, can it? It can't. Probably. It can't. We gotta. We gotta find out because if it is, we need to fucking fill it. <laughs> first episode needs to be called Total Recall. <laughs> the three piece. There's three hosts. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, do that because if not, there's a lot of pressure, like you say, to play a game, watch viewership, do that. If you've got a podcast, if people show up, they do. If they don't, you can record it, put it out. Start to build an audience that way. People start to care about what you're doing. And it's a good way to get a bit more of your personality out if you do struggle narrating gameplay and having personality come out there. I learn a lot about people from listening to them in podcasts. I watch a lot of podcasts. Um, and that's a cool cool way to do things. Um, or guest host, you know, guest star on a, a podcast come in. We're always looking for guests on the uh the Revolver Live. We've committed this year to actually having guests. I'm sure we're going to have one before the end of the year mm -hmm. at some point. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, it, there's, there's more to Twitch or more to streaming than just playing games. I think podcasting, IRL streaming, like vlogging, um, there's, a, there's a big market in the IRL thing just to follow you around if you think you live an interesting life. I mean, Wilson, for example, I'd, I'd love to watch him. I need to see the bus. Project. No, Actually, see, that's not a bad idea, Wilson. That'd be cool to see an IRL. No, I've I've at at the studio. I've thought about it a bunch of times, and I've definitely had tons of people that said they'd be interested to do it. I've seen some people doing it on Twitch, and they're having a good they're having a good time doing it. And I feel like I don't know. I don't know if there's like a humble brag. I feel like there's a few more things I could bring to Twitch that people haven't seen yet from another lamp worker yet. You know, mm -hmm. like and um, big bag of weed. <laughs> Huge. part of part of the thing and this is um another bit of advice um i'm a bit of becoming a bit of like a an audio snob so like i've got ventilation going and if i got a microphone a nice studio mic and you're gonna hear like a vacuum cleaner going the entire time no, you can only sit around and listen to that shit for so long man mm -hmm. i mean i'm used to hearing the vent because i work you know and i i block it out or whatever yeah. but so I'm looking like, you know, like um, studio microphones that like clip on, you know, for like TV shows that kind of block out a lot of background yeah. noise and are more Lovelier. like, yeah. And um, like it is definitely something I want to do. I feel like I could have a lot of fun with it. I feel like it would make me want to spend more time at work so I can get the best of both worlds. Like, hey, I want to stream. Well, guess what? I want to stream work, you know, like just mm -hmm. pulling yeah, I mean, big old blobs of molten glass and you know, slinging hot glass around the studio. It's I a mean, lot of fun and to I watch. guarantee that even if you don't think your job's that interesting, as long as legally you can record it, you know, you're not like a mm -hmm. police officer or something. Um, I'm sure someone out there would find you interesting, like garbage disposal guys, you know, the trash collectors. I'd love to wash, watch like trash you love collectors. love to wash them? I'd love to wash them. <laughs> <They're> so dirty. <laughs> They're so dirty. Could dirty you imagine like, how, how good? <laughs> how, dirty good of, how good a vlog would that be? Like three guys collecting the trash, just driving around a town, just talking shit, picking right. up the stuff. You get that's great. You know, there must be someone out there that could stream that and make the it. Of excitement is like they pull up to that one trash can that has that pizza box stuck at the bottom because like the no. pizza box always gets stuck in there. So, I know because for the past two weeks, my garbage man has refused to get the garbage box. That's crammed in the bottom. It's been in there for a couple weeks now. He'll dump the trash out, look at it, and be like, oh, fuck that. 
throw yeah. it back in the fucking I, I guarantee you, garbage guys have got so the best stories. You know, people have thrown dildos away and things like that. People will have found shit. Like, you don't know what you put in your trash, and they do. <laughs> I put I put a squirrel coat on the top of my trash. You can. imagine that? <laughs> and, and he took the squirrel too, so it wasn't there the next day. When I when I used to play a lot of golf, one of the one of the things people do is either they get onto the tee box and you're kind of waiting around for like the group in front of you to get out of your way, so you start talking and you'll beat a lot of people on the tee box. And one of the questions that always gets asked is, "What do you do for work?" And for the longest time, I was telling people I was a trash man just because I found it fun to just try to like convince somebody I was a trash man. <laughs> and uh, I I did it for like two years just to try to convince people over oh, and over that's again awesome. that that was my my line of work. It was really fun. Oh god, damn. <laughs> that's, that's that. I think I think IRL live streaming interesting jobs. That's probably an untapped market. And whether you do it on Twitch or Mixer or whatever you do, or Facebook, like you say, Facebook live stream. Um, I mean, you look at he's not a great role model, but that Logan Paul fella, I didn't even know who he was until the whole dead body in a tree. But apparently he's been putting out a 15 minute vlog of his daily life for just over a year and a half. He's got like 10 million subscribers. You know, it doesn't happen for everyone and stuff. You could do it and not be a total shitbag. That would help. Um, would it? Or I, I don't know. Being a shitbag might actually help in this situation. Seems mm-hmm. to make you like, aren't you more the... interested to see what a shitbag is up to than what mm-hmm. a fucking oh, sounds like a shitbag yeah, is immune that, right? from the, the YouTube <laughs> algorithm and demonetization? <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine if like there was 10 million viewers watching a 15 minute vlog from Steven Accounts who's just pulling together a spreadsheet every day? Just 15 <laughs> minutes of him like, if I just put this conditional formula in, um, now we can see that it updates automatically but for the. Sounds like imagine, you're playing Final Fantasy 12, Gary. <laughs> imagine that Steve from accounting is a total shitbag and he's been stealing money every day live on stream. Oh, now you tune in to watch that. <laughs> he's Wait, been embezzling Steve, money. <laughs> is Steve from accounting the same autonomous Steve robot that we were talking about? No, no. Do not okay. mess with my sacred Steve. <laughs> I was just making sure. <laughs> I don't like seeing painted in that light. You know, <laughs> uh, people, no, people love no. to see people do shit. I, I just, I just, no, really I, say I it. agree. Like, like even if it's like, shit. there's a fine line there as well, because like, I'd say be yourself, you know, always try being yourself, try to, you know, always be true to yourself. But there's a lot of successful people out there who aren't. And I'm not going to give that advice and say, don't be yourself. Try to be like a total shit bag or be as cringy as you could possibly be. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, but I mean, sometimes so what you're telling me, Wilson, is to be more of a shitbag. Yeah. I mean, I kind of want to, but at the same time, I'm like, don't be a shitbag. Because, like like I said, it seems like they get a free pass from I'm just the YouTube algorithm. I'm just hearing be a shitbag, Brian. Be a shitbag. Toxic. If, if, if you have millions of viewers, you can't, or millions of subs, you can't deny that some of these guys are exempt from demonetization. You're talking to, you're talking to a guy who can't even like resist taking the... Like the the good guy path of like every video game. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't resist it. I cannot. I know it feels I so cannot wrong. be the bad guy in a video game. <laughs> like it's I'll help so some hard, old right? lady it's in the so Witcher and, and she'll be like, here's, you know, 20 gold. And I'll be like, nah, girl, keep it. You know what I mean? Just because <laughs> I feel bad. Nah, girl, keep it. We good. It's cool. I'll steal a bunch of shit from somebody's house. <laughs> yeah. and like, all know. <laughs> I'll be a shit bag while the... nobody's looking. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, that's another game too. I've been stealing everything in that game too. I will take that 20 gold Sa- and I'll kill the bitch and take anything else on her corpse. <laughs> of course you would, Gary. S- side note, Briar, that's that's uh, the next game I'm supposed to be playing with Kate. What's that? Witcher. Witcher? Yeah, oh, we're gonna play man. and play all the DLC too. So that's that's yeah. it. Oh, I can't that's wait. I cannot wait. Yeah. Right, please tell me you're gonna play it on PC. Please tell me you're gonna play it on PC. Oh no, you play got, it on no. PC. But I'm actually really gonna play it on PS4. But I wanted to say it because you said please tell you that. Uh, are you getting an Xbox One X? Because it runs at 60 frames per second on Xbox One X. I'm not paying 500 fucking. I'll you know I'll hit fast forward on the video and it'll run at 60 frames. Shit, 500 dollars for 60 frames. If you buy it on the PC, there's a mode that you can turn it into eight times speed, so you don't have to play the game. You can just skip straight through it. That sounds okay. <laughs> now, are there gambits? Is there a gambit? <laughs> if I can make Gerald do what I want to do, preemptively. Do Gerald gambit system. You don't even yeah. have to play the game. <laughs> if they're gambits, then we're down. Uh, one other thing I noticed while we're winding down episode 24 of Revolver Live, we didn't get a chance to mention our sponsor today. And I know you guys love to hear it every week, as I do, the soft and sultry sounds of Gary Diaz as he runs the gamut or the gambit of bagadicks.com. 
our sponsors at Bag of Dicks would not be happy. But yeah, I think we should maybe have the ad read play us out. What do we think? A good way to go. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. Perfect. So there's ad reads for many different products, but this one (laughs) is for a bag of dicks. There are times in your life when sometimes you want to give a special someone a perfect gift, a gift so precious and majestic that mere flowers, perfume, or aftershaves will not cut it. No, for times like these, there's only one gift that will show them the caliber of your persons and your true intentions, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a small jewelry box filled with a variety of colored male genitals. Bagofdicks.com offers an anonymous mail order service where you, yes, you, can send anyone you so desire some purple-headed yogurt slingers. They have a smorgasbord of products to suit each and every one of your specific pork sword needs, including the brand new Box O Singing Dicks. Revolver are pleased to announce our sponsorship, and we're offering you, yes, you, our debauched and f- perverted listeners, a ludicrous promotion of 20% off your order at bagofdicks.com using the code Revolver Live. I can't guarantee the recipient of your giggle stick love package will offer you the sexual favours that you so desire, but let's be honest, <laughs> it can't help your chances much either. If you're convinced about the perfect marriage of penis and confectionery, head straight to bagofdicks.com and remember your Revolver Live promo code for a sweet discount on your order of baloney ponies. This has been Revolver Live. Thank you for listening and enjoy your dicks.